Hello and welcome to e hey, everybody. Mini Super Chat Catch-Up for episode 251, right after oh the God. anniversary. Wow. It was about how we were wrong about modern art, remember? It was very uh, um, riveting. Yes. Jackson no, was Pollock it? was present <laughs> for that stream, I Yeah, guess. he was. That's right. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna read out what's been sent and give you some answers. Uh, I guess Hooray. if they're questions, if they're just statements, then you know we'll just acknowledge them. Yeah, we'll acknowledge the statements or disagree with them. Uh, for example, it's too damn hot. Uh, I guess it depends where you are. Um, mm, it's hot around here. Uh, it's still pretty warm. Getting and cold where I'm at. It's starting to get hot. chilly. Starting to get chilly here. Um, it makes it feel like Thanksgiving and Halloween came by really quick because the summer was so hot for so long. I do feel like Halloween came by pretty quick. And I also am gradually, the more years go by, believing the, the November's a myth and it just goes from October to December. And there's just a yeah, couple days you, in November, you know? It's like, oh. You wonder. You know, some people might, when you hit like halfway through November, you're like, it's only been like two days. What the hell? And it's like, yeah, I know. It's about to be gone. December's on the way. That works. Uh, starting your sixth year with a banger, aren't we? Oh, we knew you guys would love it. Just mm -hmm. love it. Yeah, I think that was a, I think it was a good one. I really enjoyed this one. Lots to talk about, lots to discuss, a lot of things that make you think. Yeah, and we had random film talk on, which was fun. Yes, it was. Speaking of, random is finally on. Now the real fapping begins. Yeah. True. Yeah, we got to get him on again. Mm -hmm. Rush, sorry, watch Rush Hour 1, then 2, but then watch New Police Story. It feels like the dark sequel to Rush Hour 2, the dubbed version was funny. I, uh, okay. I don't think I ever saw Rush Hour 3. I don't, I don't think I saw that one. As far as I'm aware, they are considered to get worse as they go along. I remember liking all yeah, three of them. I, I, I like the first two. So, um, I'm pretty sure they'll work really well for EFAP movies, so uh, we'll do that sometime. Mm. You know, we'll do buddy cop movie arc, right? That'll be it. That's a that we have to be. There's a lot of buddy cop movies. I feel like it would be hard to. Uh, I f I feel like I'd want to comprise it of one per series. You know, so like one Lethal Weapon film, one uh, Rush Hour film. Um, what what other ones would be interesting? Well, the problem is some of them are only one, like the Nice Guys or Kiss Kiss Bang oh, Bang. Sure. Oh, which uh, yeah, the Nice Guys would have to be. Man, that that movie's really funny. It is. So <laughs> it's really, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I really like that movie. Do, do you know that there's a line in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? I think it's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, or is it Nice Guys? It's one of them, where he says, um, "Do you know what happens if you look up the word idiot in the dictionary?" And I think it's Robert Downey Jr. He's like, "Is there a picture of me?" And he goes, "No. There's the definition of idiot, which you fucking are." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, I don't know if it's as good as Aim for the Bushes, but you know. That's that's an old timer Aim for the Bushes. It is an old timer. Um that that one was because when I saw it in the theater, it was just like when when it pads down and there's no bushes inside. <laughs> and then it holds on the shot as they're tumbling to the ground. It's the music it's like, too, right? Like that makes yeah. it. There goes my hero. <laughs> and then just the abrupt cut as they hit the and concrete. The, I'll admit too, it's it's like the set of how they're they're the insane action heroes that have infinite plot armor, they win everything, they can't miss a shot, like they just everything's perfect, and then they just kill themselves yeah. well it's just i remember because uh yeah everybody thought they were awesome and they they just anytime uh will ferrell said anything they would just yell at him you're like hey like, hey you, you guys are real heroes hey hey you shut your face <laughs> <laughs> if i wanted to hear you talk i'd stick my arm off your ass and move your mouth like a puppet <laughs> it was a good movie it is that would probably be another one that, yeah i guess that would work right that's buddy cop that's a buddy cop, yeah, yeah Mark yeah. Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. Um, try not to be all hard on old Ethan. I think a lot of it is exaggerated for goofs. Anyway, love you guys. I think we were pretty um, hard on him, but we were pretty hard. hard on him, and we deserve to be. <laughs> he uh, he's an adult, and <laughs> his this video was really shit. Well, let's and be honest, his video an, was an idiot, hyper pretentious. The whole premise was like, I used to think like you, even including people listening to this video, but then I went to a museum. It's like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a very stupid person who desperately wants to be seen as intelligent. That video was pretentious and messy. Mm -hmm. It was like contradictory. Really fundamentally... Yeah, that's exactly. It didn't seem like we were building towards any 
strong coherent the, point to tie everything together. The biggest takeaway I got from it was that his enlightenment when it came to art was being told what to think about it. Yep, which is lame. While denigrating conservatives for that. Yeah, well, because he said that they couldn't even like. Yeah, it's there's so much to it that's so fucking back at. I was about to say back asswards, but that's not quite <laughs> back asswards. Back asswards. <laughs> Maybe that kind of works. I don't know. Uh, I've learned from John. I show you the keys jangling in my hand. You miss the piss at your feet. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. All right, from John Favreau, right? And uh, it says the quote is from Dave Filoni, 11 ABY. <laughs> <laughs> also, hi, Rags and Fringy, and... Hello! Uh, oh. real f sorry, hey. Random Film Talk, yeah. Uh, super happy to see Random Film Talk here. Was going to ask if you boys had seen his videos. I have. They're among my favorites. He does an excellent job. He says certain things that are bad are bad, and you know what? That's enough for me. Hmm. Enough for he also do it delves deep, but not too deep to wake up a Balrog or anything. Wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> um, it's on YouTube. YouTube, Jackie has some good acting moments, and it's a bit funny. Then watch... Oh, I guess they're talking about the the police story thing, and they said, then watch uh, Rush Hour 3. Also, Mr. Nice Guy, one bring repo for that one Harrow dog. Hmm. I'm, I'm just looking at it again, just seeing if yeah. I'm just nice Make here. I think he's saying hello to you, Rags, at the end. That's what I'm mainly. I think so. Yeah. That that was the part I'm thinking. I go, hello to you. Uh, right. The rest of your uh, message is basically indecipherable, though. But I do appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, Ahsoka wasn't even good in the Clone Wars, but she at least had a personality then. From the clips I've seen, she clearly does. Yeah. And then she became boring, but it's like, ah, no, see, she's enlightened. It's like, oh, uh, she doesn't need to be boring. Oof. <laughs> it's just, they're like, they're not even related as a concept of, oh, yeah, she's Zen. <laughs> Therefore what? She can't, like... She, Have feelings. <laughs> okay. Such a disservice, too, because um, with stoic characters, like, in their, in their harder moments or whatever, you're supposed to be able to show... That's like that's like what's so interesting about them is when they do show the the. I would actually argue the killer has that aspect. A lot of people were saying like Fastbender is a lot more wooden in that, and I was like, um. No, no. Dude, when he the fucking death glare he gives to uh, Tilda Swinton. Yeah. And they sit like down. He, he's definitely not wooden. I don't um, even. Yeah, that, I don't think it's possible I, for I, fucking Michael Fassbender to be wooden. That man. No, he, he, he's <laughs> too consistently great. Yeah. The big problem is that he doesn't always make great choices with the movies that he does. But no. he's pretty much Assassin's always. Assassin's Creed great. was great, dude. Yeah. But, well, the thing is, I haven't seen that movie, but he, he's probably no pretty good at it. <laughs> like that's. The I'm thing. sure. Yeah. yeah. I might actually be curious to see that. We should do that. Like, we it's could one do those um, video game movies that just sort of like that one is between didn't... the two eras. That one it feels yeah. like tail yeah, end it's of, one of the... the in the middle. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, because yeah, uh, the cast was Michael Fassbender, Jeremy Irons, and Marion. Uh, what's her name? The, the you know Inception what's lady. Large? Yeah, she was yeah. in it too, and it's like, wow, okay, like that's that's a decent cast. There's a lot of know? people. And then nobody watched it because that was kind of when Assassin's Creed. Everybody was starting to get bored of it. Meanwhile, if it came out today, I wonder if it would do better or worse. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Something that I... I wonder if it's just me, like, being oblivious to it, but I feel like Ubisoft games are just not... I feel like I just don't hear or see... Like, they don't seem like they're a huge part of the gaming world, you know? Like, they exist there, and they're still making games, but it just seems like people aren't that interested in what they're doing. Like, Far Cry 6, how, you know, how much people talk about that? The new Assassin's Creed game that no, just came out. Yeah, five Far Cry Five is the last one anyone talked about, and it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, but Far I don't know anything about game. six. No one, yeah. Even if it had, uh, what's his name? Gus. Jean, Gus is uh, Gus. What's it? What's his actor's name? Jean. Jean Carlo. I can't Espinito? pronounce it. I always mess it up. Well, what's yeah. it? Giancarlo Esposito, right? Giancarlo Esposito. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm, I'm trusting you, I think so, because he's partially Italian, right? So it is, it's Esposito? I have never heard him say it, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, how does Ghostbusters compare to other classics like Alien, Predator, Jurassic Park, etc.? 
it's one uh, of the greatest not... comedies ever made. Like, because it has a really, really interesting and binding story that's a really great vehicle for all kinds of very clever writing for jokes to come through. Would you say that you would put it on the same level as those films, or would it be just a hair below them? Alien, Predator, Jurassic Park. I'd need to rewatch it to decide, because it's probably, considering it's about ghosts, there's probably a lot of criticisms I'd have in terms of the ghosts could clearly have won but don't, sort of thing. Because well, they have yeah, insane power. Like, yeah, Ghost, Ghostbusters is a great movie, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, I always wonder if it's like, yeah, but I mean, Aliens, you know, and Jurassic Park, these are like your, your all time, <laughs> like, goats. Well, I mean, you know, Ghostbusters is considered one of the greatest movies of all time by a lot of people. Yeah, it's one of the goats that's, of all time. That's, that's true. Um, it's been a while since I've watched it. Um, that'd be worth rewatching. How did, what, what about, what did, it's been a while since I've seen Ghostbusters 2 as well. How do people feel about that one, it's typically? considered worse than the first one, but the, oh, people sure fight over it. just how good it is, I guess. Ah, right, I see, yeah. So when's the next anime discussion? May I suggest Ellen Elkin, I think, for its huge plot? Hi, Rags. Uh, hello. Probo don't hold your breath for the next anime discussion. But hold your feet. Well, hold I your mean, feet. Make, make sure they're warm. Don't let them get maybe cool. one punch man one day, though. Maybe. Oh, that's maybe, yeah. That's a possibility. Glad to see random film talk. Enjoy his videos. Hi, Fringy, Rags, and Mola. Rip, Ray, Steven. Hello. Uh, hello, indeed. Um, and yeah. Yes, rest in peace, Ray Stevenson. Gone way too early, and you know, not to be selfish, but man, uh, he was gonna—I was gonna really enjoy him potentially, like going forward with uh, Balin, because I just liked his performance a lot. But now, obviously, it's gonna be recast. If not, you know, who who knows? Maybe Balin's gone forever. We don't actually have any idea what well, Star Wars. I guess up they to. don't know if they're gonna do anything with a season two anyway. If that's like a guarantee, but he was the best part of this show. Yeah. He, was, he was definitely and... the best part of that show. And while that isn't a high bar, he still was the best, so... Oh, yeah. First place well, is still just, first place. I just felt like he was imbuing the script with way more than was actually present. You know when he said, like, I like the idea of it, you know, the, but but the not what it truly was in relation to, like, the Jedi? That's such a moment of, like, please keep talking. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, that, like, Dave Floyd would be like, that's all of it. That's the story. You're like, no. <laughs> this that's a story. Gone. That's a character. Why That's not it. let him, you know, you've got him. Why not give him more material? Uh, thoughts on Ghostbusters Afterlife? Is it Tizami like TFA? I haven't seen it. Nah, I haven't, I haven't it. either. Uh, I haven't, but I, I haven't they're seen making it, a don't sequel. care to. They're, uh, they're making a sequel. They are making a sequel. Um, the thing about it was, Drinker, Gary, and several others saw it. People who I think like Ghostbusters more than I do. And they, they came back, they were like, yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, I think that's kind of uh that was the impression I got is like obviously 2016 was miserable, uh, and that this one was way more normal, but not that interesting. And I think that if 2016 didn't exist and this one came out in its place, people would be like, eh, wasn't very good. Well, yeah, because I mean, again, yeah, Ghostbusters is like kind of uniquely quality, <laughs> you know. People say lightning in a bottle, and I believe it. Though. Like it was yeah. a collection of artists all at once that you it's fucking difficult to get again. Mm-hmm. But uh, well, I wouldn't mind checking it out at some point, yeah. The, you know, again, the the first film was like an original idea, you know, for a movie compared to, well, we own the Ghostbusters IP, might as well do something with it, you know? <laughs> like, it's a very, a very different sort of motivation for creation. Did you know that in Tolkien's lore, Galadriel's daughter marries Elrond, given she isn't mentioned in Rings of Power, either she isn't born yet, creepy, uh, Elrond imprinting on a baby, or Galadriel abandoned her child to hunt Sauron. Either way, yikes. It's only at the very end of Rings of Power that Galadriel even mentions Celeborn, which is, like, weird that she's like, oh, that's my husband, I haven't seen him since he left to go to war. He's been gone. Like, oh, that's... Mm. Like, okay, um... Like, we just bring that up. She just, like, randomly brings it up to Theo. Yeah, but I mean, bear, like, in mind, bear in mind she has a Tempest. That it is within tempest. her. Yeah. So funny, when, when season two rolls around, it's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> if, know, you, if you insist. <laughs> like... I, just, I can't believe something so expensive and, and like, so... And Lord of the Most Rings, right? Such an expensive Lord of the Rings project can just... 
inspire absolutely nothing out of people. Yeah, no one gave a shit, and it was terrible. Okay. No one gave and a what shit. a yeah. stark yeah. contrast where it'll be like trailer for Rings of Power, and we're like, lol, look at that. Oh no, <laughs> CJ's even worse. Oh, this is rushed. Oh, they're doing Rings that power, now. You know? Yeah, that House of the Dragon where we're just House silently staring at it, and it's yeah. like, ooh, is, oh, oh. Then it'll, like, flash Sorry. one image of one character going, like, ah, and we're like, oh, are they going to die? <laughs> That's what's going to happen to Oh, my God. Lord Longbone of, oh, Longbong, sorry, of Mewishington Abbey. Is there any good chance for Kong Fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong, when there's less going on, it'll be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. So well, Wagsies, scritches for the good boy. Ah, hello. That's not a bad idea, honestly. We yeah, were talking about some arcs back there, and I think the the, uh, the Long Kong arc could be something where we just watched Long Kong ten times in a row, and uh, yeah, it's just when uh, no, that would be on, long. Yeah, let's go on. I think if there's anything that helps get this gay actor Michael, oh, now they've changed it to gay actor Makoto Shrugless through a three day Makoto twelve hour Makoto Shrugless. Yeah, a twelve hour shift gauntlet. It's Efab. Love the massives. Well, good. I'm glad gay actor Makoto Shrugless likes uh, likes Efab. More gay actors than I than I thought existed. Wow. I mean, we don't even have that many actors sending super chats, but of the few that there are, at least two of them are gay, and they want to make sure everyone knows that. Not bad. Holy jumping crispy critters! People like to talk about media droughts, but I'm over here suffering from a media flood. So many video games coming out I want to play. Not enough money, not enough time. It's been a great year for video games. It has. It's. It it's seems like it's always a great year. Oddly enough, uh, a lot of games are constantly I coming would say out. That 2023 feels like this generation's 2007, you know, of just like, damn, man, we've just had like pretty consistently great games coming out. There's always one year, like every console generation that's just... We're ignoring the bad ones, though? Well, no, what, what, that's what, I, what I'm saying is that this has been a distinctly good year. You said consistently even, good. Oh, wait, sorry. Now I'm confused. What I was saying is that this year was like a distinctly good year for video games. Yeah, That's I can kind of agree with that, but not consistently good. Oh, what, well, in terms of every single game that's come out this year? like maybe Certainly if we're going by, uh, I assume we are, AAA, uh, maybe oh, AA no, as no. well. Oh, no, no, no. Well, I guess it's kind of interesting because the caveats are like, yeah, Gollum. Um, <laughs> for yeah, which would be... three actually uh diablo 4 is like kind of a big old sort of like asterisk i'll wait too <laughs> yeah but you gotta remember that a lot of people think that that's one for the list of how great this year's been well it doesn't matter no right. i know but uh, i don't no, you I, I, you were I, listing I, based on you right not everyone oh I, yeah of course of course um because when you think about the list for this year it's like well we had resident evil 4 dead space uh super mario brothers wonder tears of the kingdom uh, Baldur's Gate uh, 3, which I haven't played, but... Was know, Metroid Dread this year? No, that was uh, that was 2021, but oh, we right. had Metroid Prime Remastered, so that was neat. Oh, sorry, um, that's... Yeah, that's what... Uh, um, and then Street Fighter 6 was cool. Um, Mario RPG's gonna okay. be this year, right? The remaster? Yes, that's coming out... Uh, that's coming out at some time that I will not say because that will reveal <laughs> the date that we're doing this recording. <laughs> well, I've just I've just made it clear that it's not out yet, so <laughs> Uh yes, but but by the time by the time this is out it will absolutely definitely be out. That absolutely. makes sense, that's fair. Um but yeah, it's it's just like I would never want to make a grand claim about the quality of video games in the year without acknowledging we've had some noticeably stinky games that came out this year. Uh, well, I guess, um, because usually the, the types of, like, the, the all-time great years for video games are stuff like 2001, 2007. In which there would have been stinky games as well, of course. Oh, of course. It's just that, you know, in 2001, it's like, that was the year of, uh, that was the year of Grand Theft Auto 3, Jack and Daxter, um, damn, good time for my brain to fart, Metal Gear Solid 2, um, Silent Hill 2. Uh, Halo Combat Evolved. Um, oh, damn, that would have been the year of... Uh, or, wait, the GameCube came out in 2001, didn't it? Or am I mixing uh, up? I think, I think Super Smash Bros. Melee came out in 2001, right? Um, the, the point being that there was a shit ton. Yes, it did come out in 2001. Yeah, this is what I mean. 2001 was one of like, the all-time great years 
Uh, and then 2007 was filled with uh, filled with pretty important games: Super Mario Galaxy, Bioshock, Call of Duty 4, Halo 3. Um, again, good time to have a brain fart. There's more, but yeah, there, there's usually every every generation there's one notable like really great year. Um, and it I could be said, I, I don't think any of us can make a claim on this, but as far as I'm aware, this is the year that Cyberpunk got fixed as well. Uh, well I yeah, hear nothing but very good comments out. about Cyberpunk this now. Year? Yeah. Um, uh, the interesting thing is that when it comes to, when you look at a lot of prior generations for like the, the all-time great years for video games, they usually kind of represent what that generation offered in terms of like a difference from the last one. It's like 2001, all those sorts of games. It's like, yeah, those were games that weren't possible on Nintendo 64 or uh, PlayStation 1. Like, that was very much emblematic of, yeah, we're in the this new generation, same for like 2007. But the differences between the generations of consoles, at least, have become a lot more... Um, oh, it's, there was it's a lot more, uh, Starfield as well, wasn't there, which kind of sank oh, uh, over time. Yeah. I just, I, yeah, didn't hear much about it, really. It just seemed, from what I saw, it was way too generic and boring. Yeah, nothing I mean, special I mean, about it. Didn't seem like it had, like, really any polish to it. It was just was it like, a very dated huh. RPG. It's like, damn, man, like, this is the best that you could do after all this time. Like, it's, it's almost like, guys, you realize that, like, Skyrim isn't the standard for what can be accomplished in open-world RPGs anymore, right? Well, and then we got not... Baldur's Gate 3 comes out and people, like, doing nothing but fucking raving about it. Like, I heard about it so many times at this point that... Baldur's Gate 3 seems like a really important game because it was a genre that was constantly, we were constantly told could not succeed, which is like a very gamey game RPG, yeah, uh, like an old school character RPG, and not only was it successful- And a turn-based one too. Yeah, and not only was it successful, it was considerably more successful than like any other RPG that's come out this year. And everyone well, talked really about it, it was game. praised to high heaven, it was like insane, it was nuts. Mm. And it's been interesting that, again, other genres that were, we had been told for a while could not succeed of, like, you know, third-person survival horror games. And meanwhile, Dead Space and Resident Evil 4, you know, Res Resident Evil 4, I guess you'd say, more like an action game, but still. Um, it's, it's yeah. And then meanwhile, right, like, Modern Warfare 3 kind of comes out and is representative of, like, the decay of Call of Duty as a series and live service games. But at the same time, it's probably going to make a lot of money, so... Yeah, probably. Uh, it's been a great year with an asterisk for sure. Um, Conjuring Universe EFAP Arc when? Conjuring Universe. That's a good idea. Yeah, that is a really good idea. Whenever you guys say it like that, people are like, oh, that's the one they're doing. So keep doing that because then it throws everyone off. Because <laughs> <laughs> are we doing it or are we not? Now you'll never know. It was, uh, Wait, I think it was the last EFAP stream, there was like three different, ah, so it's obvious now that you're doing that for next Halloween, it's like, <laughs> True. maybe we are, maybe we are, uh, Meat Canyon understands XQC's essence, he understands oh, a lot of the essence of, uh, things. That cartoon's too good, having him be like a goblin who's attached to his chair, climbing around in his treasure vault, stealing people's eyeballs, and putting him in a little... Treasure chest. He deserves himself a, you know, a Netflix, Netflix show or something. There's no way to run, Chat. There's no way to run. So don't even bother. No way to run. Betraying him as an I'll evil goblin eyes. is. I'll you know, take your sometimes... eyes. You know, I'll take your friend's eyes. I'll take your eyes again. I'll do it again, Chat. <laughs> Chat. Art imitates life, they say. <laughs> Hi, Rags. Hello. Have any of you tried Ultra Kill? I yes. have not. Uh, that game's cool. Uh, I think they've added new levels since I played it, so I should give it another shot. It's a really cool, uh, uh, like, retro arcade um, uh, shooter. Like, right. in the style of like, PlayStation 1, like a late 90s video game. Is that, is that, do, we, do we say that's 32-bit, basically? Is that, is that what we call that art style? Not actually sure. I don't know what low it's poly, called. Low poly, maybe. But it's a, yeah, it's a cool video game. Um, super fast paced, really fun, cool visuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good news. I was looking at a, a highlight, and I thought it was so funny because uh, we've talked about this before. Whenever you see like um, us in EFAP, and then something happens, and you have a reaction, and then you from the past has the exact same reaction and says the same oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. I'm ben, a consistently written character. Ben Shapiro 
saying that he'd played Quake. And, like, me from now and me from then were both like, what the fuck? Ben Shapiro played Quake. Like, it just but feels wrong. Point, and... I mean, it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because, I mean, how old is he? Isn't he, like, approaching 40? I mean, he would have been the right age. Oh, yeah, but I picture him in the same way I do, like... No, I, certain... I know what you mean. Like, he didn't play video games or something. Or that Quake would be like, ah, I don't want to play. That's a... That game is... Well, that's a... uh, <laughs> like... well I guess, like... Between Quake and Doom, which one's more uh, heathenistic? <laughs> well, I, this is the thing. I'd, I'd assume uh... both of them would be out. Uh, but I guess probably do- Doom. I guess Doom has to be worse, Quake right? has Doom's a lot more of, hellish, like, while Quake is like yeah. uh, more Lovecraftian. But, but remember, you're killing the demons, so you know, like if anything, it's a pretty. It's it's got a good message. Yeah. Kill the demons. You could interpret it that way. There you go. You'd be fine. But Doom was. One of the many of the things that were like, ah, oh, it's a Satan game. Playing that will make you oh, like yeah, the Satans. Yeah. Even though you're killing them. Uh, also, new yeah. One Piece, shockingly decent, at least compared to other anime adaptations. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It's good. I, I like that show. <laughs> that, 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 I like the sets. I like that they built all of these cool sets. Yeah. Uh, if they do go through it, then there will be a universe in the Star Wars multiverse where the clones of a man are women somehow. I'm not sure what that... That feels like it was like, a response to something. Lady clone... Like, if they did, like, a what-if scenario, but all of the stormtroopers... Well, not the stormtroopers, the clone troopers were, uh, ladies. I mean, that would be that... tough to make sense. If you have... You can clone any one unit, you're gonna want, like, the biggest, fastest, strongest, most loyal, right? Uh, I guess what they were pointing out is... Can you create like female clones derived from uh, from a uh, good old Django fat? I mean, I guess it's up to the writer. I imagine not, but he never. Yeah, but I guess it is up to the writer. Smiling Friends season one is on DVD, also on Blu-ray, and I have it. I have to buy two of them because apparently Mel can't get it in Germany. That's uh, that's cruel. That is leaving the Germans Come on, out. Season two. Come on. Hey, uh, I've learned from Rick and Morty, we're not Russian, we just, just let them do whatever they want. Let it, yeah. not e let it not even become too culturally significant, okay? <laughs> like, just... <laughs> well, Rick and Morty want. feels like it's now... I just don't hear people talk about it anymore. Dead. Like it used no one to be does, yeah. It's just kind of dead, it. done. But the, they're um, locked in for several more seasons. The absolute... Obnoxygen that was spreading across the whole world when the uh, the, the 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 season three premiere was was coming. Yeah. now. it was yep. enormous. That was the height, and now it's just like it's another show that's on that you don't hear much about. Yeah. Do you think statistically there was someone who lived to an old age and liked the taste of every different kind of food they ever ate? Maybe. Probably, I think. No, right? Because, well, I don't know. I, it might depend on if some flavors are necessarily like opposed to one another. Well, I guess technically you could like them mm. both, right? I suppose. Yeah, I think you could. I'm thinking of a guy who likes rare and well done steak at the same time. What does that look like? I mean, it's probably like what Rags is saying. In terms of just this, this, uh, I'm trying to think of like a, like, oh, I love me some spicy food, but then I also love me some. You know, not spicy at all food. And you're like, hmm. yeah. I wonder if there are flavors where it's just the way that your body interacts with those flavors is you have to like one or the other. But I'm not sure. Uh, Maybe. Glad you're watching Ahsoka, but please listen to the Thrawn trilogy audiobooks so you can understand just how bad Filoni butchered him. And why well, the fans take your word for like it. him. We did. We did take the, 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 the that's how we operate. We we went with, and as from what I can tell, people mostly agree with this who have read the books, that he is Tywin in the Star Wars universe. And it's like, okay, I've got it. Understand. He's gonna be making decisions that are well ahead of the, the enemies. He's gonna be calm, he's gonna be authoritative, he's gonna be kind of intimidating, but at the same time, you know, scarily reasonable sometimes, making decisions that are like, that doesn't sound super evil. And it's like, yeah, we gotta think ahead. Why is he doing that? That sort of stuff, and obviously what we got was hugely embarrassing, so. <laughs> yep. I was no, gonna say... It was just as I planned, Blue Dutch Vandalin. I'll be completely honest, like, he was super embarrassing whether or not we would have read those books. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. Uh, New Order is still top dog in machine games iteration on good old Wolfie? 
a Wally? Wolfenstein. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, he is hoping number three is better. Are they making... I thought they were making a... Because they're making an Indiana Jones game. I think that's what they're working on at the moment, so I don't even Just know. Just in time, too. The Indiana <laughs> Jones... Uh, you gotta bank Indiana on that Jones, Jones hype, yeah. yeah. You really do. Well, Strike uh, while the iron's hot, you know? Uh, I guess it's gonna be an Xbox exclusive... Well, you know, Xbox and PC game. Because uh, that's Bethesda. I like, I like the name Lucasfilm Games. It makes a lot of sense. Next we'll have Lucas Lucasfilm Film Game Films. <laughs> it's just like, why did you... Lucas you like you Films, did, Games, Studios. And they're like, oh shit, it might be worthwhile to have a, an interactive division, what with video games being increasingly popular. Yeah, it turns out it's like a whole industry or something. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that LucasArts was like a pretty significant contributor to that, uh, to that industry. And then you destroyed yeah. them. I mean... Why the fuck... I don't know why, why they would you that. do that. Video games are the future. Why the fuck would you buy it and then destroy it? You fool! You foolish I think that was fool! Because uh, I remember that Disney had Disney had like an interactive uh, like portion of the company that eventually sort of ceased to. I think it ceased to exist, and I think they've redone it. But they're not like because Warner Brothers has you know they've got like their video game presence persistently. I just find it interesting that there would be like because Universal used to do video games. I mean, that's a Crash Bandicoot games was Universal, but then I guess they decided that it wasn't worthwhile. It's like, damn, guys, you should have just been in it for the long haul, you know? Hi, Rags. Hello. I'm Nazi fragging actor Michael Frackus, and I'd like you Ooh. to know, you'd like to know your opinion on Wolfie the Old Blood, not New Blood. Oh, I, the Old Blood? I never played that one. Oh, that was the uh, DLC, right? For the for first what? one. The first one, I didn't, I think I didn't I think play so. it. Yeah. Um, but I haven't played it either. No, didn't play it. No. Uh, do you think Randy Newman was hired for Tom Toy Story because he was sounds like Tom Hanks if he was singing? I feel like <laughs> that sounds the same. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I don't I think, think so, but maybe. Uh, hell yes. He's, uh, he's a very talented composer. They're very lucky to have him. Um, the Those films have great soundtracks. Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. Goddamn. Uh, when I super chatted asking if you've got a smoke, none of you massives replied, got gum. Leon is sad right now. Got any hmm. gum? <laughs> got any gum? I haven't oh. had gum in a while. Yeah, it can be good. I had gum today. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, my boy. Uh, RFT. I guess. Yeah, yeah. On EFAB. Random film talk. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's, and we're gonna get him back. That's easily. right. Um. Uh, greetings, all my massives. It is I, Vince the Plumber. Have you guys seen the movie Training Day? And if so, what do you think of it? After rewatching it, I would say it's a pretty damn solid script. Hi, Rags, and happy Saturday. Hello! I don't think I've seen Training Day. I I've always, seen it yet. I've always meant to, never did. Yeah. Oh, have all three of us not seen it? Okay, whoops. There you go, that's one for the... Yeah, Get on to that one. yeah I've, heard, I've heard good things about that film. Um, thoughts on Az sawing out over pronouns in Starfield. Mola, why do you hang out with those embarrassing culture warriors when you don't engage in that crap? I hang out with loads of people who have completely different points of view than I do. I've been doing it a lot lately, actually. The, uh, when I'm on Adam and Sitch's stream, most of the time is spent arguing. When I'm on uh, Destiny streams, it's almost exclusively there to argue. When I'm on Star Wars Theory stream, <laughs> most of it is spent figuring out whether or not we agree. Most of the time I spent with fucking friggy and rags on, on EFAB is spent either arguing with the video or with each other. I, uh, I find all of it very bracing. And then, you know, points of view that I don't share. I mean, I'm friends with people who politically I don't align with, religiously I don't align with, fucking socially I don't align with, or what breakfast we eat I don't align with. It's, um... I, I, I always thought we were pretty clear on this. Like, there's barely anybody we won't speak to, um, with exceptions included, like... I don't know if it, if Movie Bob wanted to speak to us. I don't know. It's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, He's a fucking uh, monster, but like, like, but there is that. But that, in a way, is like, what do you have to say about stuff? You know, yeah. Like, what would you say if you actually had to 
maybe face a little criticism and you couldn't just like make a snarky tweet and run away? It would be toxic as fuck though. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um but... Yeah, as for like uh embarrassing culture warriors, like I don't know, that's like everybody's got a fucking view on this current state of culture. Different people can push it in different parts. I I've talked to him and others many times about differences or how certain things work out. I find that these positions are a hell of a lot more reasonable when you know exactly what everything behind them is. I feel like that was illustrated on the YMS stream, where it's like, what an absurd, insane, and crazy thing that person just said. And then you're like, okay, so let's start at the beginning. Like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Do you know about this? 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 And it's like, this relates to this. This is the trope here. This is what this writer has said. This is what this interview is. And it's like, do you understand why they would make that statement now without realizing that it doesn't sound as straightforward as someone who has, like, zero context? And that goes on both ends. I just, um, I'm more interested in the people themselves, necessarily. And, uh, I think, I think Az and Gary, and I don't know if you include Drinker in this, uh, like, Super Chat point of view, but I think they all have really strong insights on stuff that they're incredibly passionate about, which is what I'm there for. I love honesty as well. Um, as long as they don't threaten to kill me or want me dead in general, I'm trying to think of like the, the that, that's like you know you've crossed a line <laughs> like at that point I guess um, or uh, or like explicitly say like their only intention would be to fuck with us like when you do that it's just like yeah I'm not gonna talk to you at that point like why the fuck would I? But um, you know I find the opposite with a lot of these people, including the lads I'm with right now. We don't agree Ooh. on everything, do we? Yeah, we do. What are you talking about? Yeah, we about? do. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking we're do. We're afraid of yeah. you. Wait, so you don't yeah, agree with me that we don't agree on everything. But also, no. we're afraid of rags, Maybe. Maybe. That's very possibly yeah. the case, mm -hmm. but not necessarily. Well, well. But it's definitely something to think about. Uh, hey, Massives. I watched a couple of movies that, that the past couple of days being Uncut Gems, which is a movie that slipped past us. We, we intended to see that so many times. That was 2019-ish, right? Something like that. Looks good, though. It was, I, or at I, least I've heard, heard good things about it. Yeah, it kept getting recommended. We were like, oh, gonna watch it, gonna watch it, gonna watch it, gonna watch it. I think there was even a day where we were like, here it comes. And then we were like, oh, busy with something. And like, oh, never mind. And it just slipped away. Uh, it was pretty good. In Bruges, it was bloody excellent. In Bruges, one of my favorites. That's uh, yep. a top tier movie. Oh, um, that's a great movie. Oh, and look, they said Seven Psychopaths. It was also really great. Yeah. It's, yeah, those two I adore together. Uh, thoughts on them? Okay, so Uncut Gems not seen. In Bruges is funny as all hell, while also being incredibly uh, moving in terms of like a character study sort of it's thing. It's a really great film to point to in terms of uh, the balance of comedy and drama and doing it expertly when it's a very, very difficult thing to do. And very meaningful drama, very heavy drama. And I'm pretty Wobby sure uh, In Bruges was the movie that turned me on Colin Farrell. I used to think he was just meh, but... Um... When I saw him in that, I was like, shit, man. Like, uh, especially... I mean, he's excellent in that movie. Yeah, the scene in, like, the park and stuff. There's, there's a couple in there that he yeah. does a really, really good job with, and I buy him completely. Uh, and then, of course, Brandon Cleason's just awesome, because he always is. It's mm -hmm. true. I really enjoyed him as Mad-Eye Moody in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Unironically did, yes. <laughs> I was very happy when I knew he was in the movie, because I was like, yay, more of him! Um... Uh, Seven Psychopaths is one of the most fun I've had with a movie that's kind of meta. The, like the main character yeah. writing the movie as, and, and a lot of the comments he has about movie making is reflected in the movie itself. Uh, it's a very interesting and unique film. There's not many films like Seven Psychopaths. Yeah, and then Christopher Walken is fucking brilliant in it and he has some of the funniest yeah. lines. When he... <laughs> When he calls them hallucinogens. <laughs> <laughs> There's so a lot many of lines use in the, that. the meme format for him <laughs> when, when the guy points a gun at him. On the yeah, road. yeah. <laughs> I'll no, shoot you. I'm, I'm not, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then, of course, the uh, when they're telling their oh, versions man. of the scripts, and Sam Rockwell's is some of the funniest shit in the whole movie. Uh, they shoot um, uh, Woody Harrelson to the neck and as he's describing it he's like but that doesn't get the job done so then he pulls out a shotgun and he gets it from nowhere and he just blows up his whole head and it's just like a fountain of blood or whatever. Like, I, there's so much fun in that movie uh, I, easy recommendations for both of them 
Yeah, uh, that'll be one on our rewatch list eventually. No doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Amongst other things. Because there's a lot of good movies that we haven't seen yet. Maybe. Also, play Allegedly. Little Nightmares. High Rags, Mubles, and Frongold. Hello. Hello. And, uh, yeah, at some point. I've heard Little Nightmares is neat. Regarding my 250 super chat, the giant pinecone Beyblade boss was from Armored Core 6. I would recommend I played... Or I guess I would recommend... I played a lot of Dark Souls, or DS, there could be a couple of games, and this challenged me in a way Dark Souls or Elden Ring hasn't in a while. Okay, yeah, it probably is Death, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, hi. I wasn't able to send a super chat on the anniversary, so better late than never. Thank you for all the great work, lads. Thank you very much. Absolutely, thanks very much. Isn't this the boyfriend of the chick that brought down Super Mega with her essay allegations? He's involved with that in some way, but I'm not exactly certain. Yeah, um, I got no I think he's clue just, on that. I think he just knows someone involved, but I, I'm not certain what the extent actually is. Um, not exactly Botticelli's primi, Primavera, is it? Uh, is um, familiar? yeah, Prima, Primavera. I'm, I, I don't recognize that very well, I'm afraid. Um... Hey, let me get a picture of it. Picture, um, oh, it's picture gonna be... of it for you. You will, you will recognize it. Uh, this uh... Is, uh, you'll recognize it when you see it. Here, let me just show you real quick. I think it's also called the... Uh, is it the Rape of Persephone? Or... Copy image. I think this is... Or am I thinking of a different one? <laughs> no, Persephone, that was a statue. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting it confused. But I think it depicts, like, a similar story. Ah, uh, this old thing. Yeah. Oh. So. And everything from, when you look at these old paintings, it's interesting to look at all the stuff, because everything is just steeped in symbolism, from the things that they're wearing and their colors to... The, the, what they're carrying with them and what they're referring, uh, re referencing. There's just so much oh, going on. Now you remind me. Wasn't it in the video I said the Venus one was kind of lame? Well, yeah. he said it was like overcrowded and the colors were were too dull and stuff like that. <laughs> and then he made yeah, fun but... of the old dude's paintings, which were actually amazing paintings. It's fucking amazing because uh, he would change his mind completely if some artist walked up to him and said, "Oh, here's the law," and then he goes, "Oh, what's this?" And it says like it's supposed to be everything he just said. Because it represents yeah, blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, these older paintings are cursed with you probably are never going to know exactly what they're And that's so fucked up. The, the art is just significantly worse because you're not aware of what the artist was thinking about when he made it. When a huge part of what it means to examine it is to do it independent of any insight from the creator. At that point, what's the, the fucking point of the artwork? You just talk to them? Yeah, well, yeah, the this, exactly. it's unironically a really important el element that's like subtly central to the discussion of that video, which was if the only thing that's meaningful about art is what it means or what it's referring to, then what is the point of the art? Why do art? Yeah. Why it's not like... just tell the story? Why not just tell the context? Where where does the where do you get to the point where you no longer need to make a statue or paint a picture? It may as well not be a statue or a picture or whatever. It may as well just be an arrow that points to where the text is. It's kind of like when the uh, when we watch a movie and the themes are really shittily executed. Like you didn't have to at that point. It's like, well, why'd you make the movie? Just tell me what you want your message <laughs> to be and save us the time. Well, yeah, you know, like the robot that was cleaning up the oil that was coming from it over and over and over again. Yeah, Everybody was oil, finding yeah. something about that, and then you read the description. And you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about it, but you know, put into better words. Which uh, is fine. I don't. I don't as I said, I, I'm always on board with finding out what the artist's intentions were on a thing. Yeah, the sometimes idea it can that, be really interesting. Like the way that uh, Ethan is online, sort of. That was his name, right? That's the YouTuber. Yes, I think. Ethan um, is online. Yeah. The way he built it up was like, if if you don't have law, well. <laughs> What's the you point? <laughs> like, yeah, you, know? you just, it's just you can't fuck. just appreciate something for what it is. You can't and just so be like, "Wow, that's a beautiful painting," and I can appreciate it's... the skill that it took to create this. Yes, 
the lame part is that he thinks he's evolved when he's gone backwards. Backwards, he yeah. He's gone backwards. It, he's made it harder for himself to enjoy art. Yeah, and he's taken away his own agency. Most of it now is based yeah. on uh, somebody else's. Which sucks. When your agency is a Remember, huge guys, part of the process of sharing art. Be the bold motherfucker that says Blade Runner is bad. Don't be the cuck that says, I watched it until I liked I it. Watched it four until times, I had the correct five opinion. Times yeah. Until I thought it was amazing. You know, because, fuck me, that's just so lame. <laughs> <laughs> a shilling for the art fartometer. Well, thank you. Is that like a, what, you put it in and then it collects farts in the meter, and then once it gets to... Yeah, but they're art know. ones, so you sniff them and you go, Ooh. Or, or does it, yeah, it dispenses the farts into a little glass, like in a... Mm -hmm. And then you can smell it, like in South Park. Have any of you seen... Uh... Norsekai of the Valley of the Wind? No, I've not. I've not seen that. I have not seen that. I uh, just finished know, it and but... thought it was really damn good. Yoinky shbloinky. Isn't that the uh, Ghibli one? It could be, yeah. Um, there's plenty of movies of those that I have not seen yet, and I would like to see them. Oh, I'm, I, I Googled it, Google it to make sure. The cast is Shia LaBeouf is in it, Patrick uh -huh. Stewart, okay. Mark Hamill. Oh. Neat. Wow, didn't know. And apparently, I think in their latest movie, um, Robert Pattinson is playing a character. A and people. from what I've seen, is he, he's doing a really good job. He's like Wait, you can answer that question then, because someone said he was wild in it. What does that mean, Rags? What's he doing? Uh, he, he is voice acting a stork character, and his voice is really good, and I really like his performance a lot. But I actually want to know what it is, though, so if you're being sarcastic... <laughs> I'm not being sarc. Why would why would I ever? You know me. I wouldn't be sarcastic about something like this. This is serious stuff. Epo sus. That's what he. No, you could you could literally just uh, Google it and check, and you could probably just type in Robert Pattinson anime stork, and then you'll get it. I would rather type out people. And it was sus really good. I saw the I saw the Twitter <laughs> posts of people saying, "Wow, Robert Pattinson's really going ham uh, in this voice acting." Role, and then they showed like clips from it or so from the, the trailer is, or is something. If people are saying that on like Twitter or something, then it definitely means that he's doing a good performance because one of the big things that people have been complaining about, fairly so, I would say, is like getting celebrity voice actors, but then they don't do voice acting. They just like yeah, they just be voice. themselves. Yeah. Like, well, like, have you guys seen the Garfield trailer? No, I haven't. No. I have not. Chris Pratt as a uh, Garfield. Is it, you know, uh, I don't know. I feel like Bill Murray. I don't know. I I feel like I feel like he kind of fit as Garfield a little bit. You know. <laughs> sure. I, uh, I don't I really have of, much of an opinion on it. Like, I'm not. The thing was, I was never. In, I didn't see much Garfield stuff. I just knew he was a cat that liked lasagna. That's it. He likes lasagna and he hates Mondays. And he's he's yeah. lazy and manipulative. Um, I, well, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's just that he, he, he definitely sounds like Chris Pratt, all right? That's, that's how it goes. And Samuel L. Jackson is playing Garfield's dad. Okay. That could and be he's fun. A old, he's a big, he's is a he going to say meow their fucker? I don't know about that. Um, well, probably the, not because of the rating. The, actual, but... the art style of the film looks really cool. It, uh, it definitely looks like the Garfield, uh, comics translated to 3D. Like with Who's maintaining playing, uh, a lot. John. Uh I think Nicholas uh, Age? Uh, no, 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 Yo. no. Uh, Beast. Beast. What's his name? Nicholas Ho Ho Holt? Oh Holt. Holt, yeah. I think he's playing uh okay. I think he's playing him. And obviously Nicholas nobody's playing Holt. Odie. Um he's let me remind Beast. myself. He's Beast. Who is this person? Beast. Well, I don't know if Rags has seen Beast? that. Beast? Have you, have you seen from... none of the, uh, the X-Men, the newer X-Men movies? I have, but a long time ago. Oh, uh, what else has he been in? He was uh, in Skins for British people. Renfield, I The would... Great, Warm Bodies, The Menu, Mad Max Fury Road, Jack oh, the, the Giant yeah. Slayer. Yeah, because he was in The Menu. And yes, About he was a boy. In, uh, I like seeing none of his Road. movies. Damn. I've, just, yeah, seen, I've, just, Fury I've, Road, I've seen Fury Road, but it's been so long I don't like remember anything about it. Yeah, other than sure. the fire guitar, but... He was the uh, he was the guy that basically went along on a uh, on a uh, Max's adventure. He looks like the... um he he looks like Benedict Cumberbatch's stunt double. 
I don't think that they look even remotely alike. Well, agree to disagree. Yeah, see, we disagree on something. Yeah, and you you agree to be wrong, basically. I agree to allow you to be incorrect, and (laughs) that's all right. We live in a we live in a world where progressive. Yeah, rags. If I was movie Bob, I wouldn't have let you get away with it, but. You wouldn't let me get away with it. I wouldn't let you get away with it if I was movie Bob. Let me get away with it. Oh my god. (laughs) I would have thrown you in with the Republicans (laughs) into the fire. (laughs) 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 Cast you into the lake of fire. Uh, Give me a second. I need to grab a drink. I'll be right back. Yoinky spoinky. Uh, They've got a quote here that I I love because I assume he said it. I just can't quite remember, but just right. I wouldn't just like the movie more, it would be a tangibly better movie. Wait, what What was the context of that? I don't know, but it's, it's in quotations and they say it's just right, and I could totally buy it, because that's what people do. We probably pointed that out at the time. You can't say that a thing is anything other than your opinion, but that you can also say, I wouldn't just like it more, it would be tangibly better. Yeah, what, what the fuck does that mean? In a world where it's all just my opinion. It's up to you to interpret it, I suppose. Is, can it be tangible in your mind? Is I that know. I fucking no. It just your sounds mind? like he's slithering past saying it's, it's just not. better. Uh, it's slippery, isn't it? It's slippery, weaselly little... I almost want to say want slithery it. because slippery is like um, you are of a substance trying to walk around and you're like, whoa, whoa. But like it's slithery is like more... You, you know exactly what you're doing. Sinister. It's not like the greased up deaf guy just running around like, Touch yeah. me! <laughs> like, it's way more of like, good, good. Oh, well, that's too... I don't know if that beetle was slippery, but he was a... That was a, that's, a that's an underrated Family Guy joke. The beetle rubbing his hands together saying, good. While watching... <laughs> I think you said before, but you're very fond right. of that joke. It's a good one. I just I just find it funny that there's a beetle there just saying good, good. <laughs> While rubbing his hands together. Little it's house, little, little TV. Like a... Yeah, in his little house and his little TV, that's right. And part of what makes that joke good is that he never came back, unlike other jokes. Um, hey, look at this. Is a car repair manual an art? Is a car repair like a oh. Um <laughs> I mean, it's got all of the elements of creative expression, even if you believe I it's entirely I think it would technical. surely have to be. You've got um, several definitely. crafts I happening mean, in there. Well, it's just even the fact that you have the writing and... Uh, Presumably all, images. Like, probably images. There is, there is graphic design yeah. in a textbook like that. The fact that the, you know, the fact that there was a decision made to put in paragraphs because it would be easier to read and easier to understand and communicate information. You gotta understand, we here on EFAP have an incredibly broad definition of our art. Yeah, and then we I come think... clamping down on how, whether or not it's good. <laughs> yes, I, I think that's just a better conversation to have than defining whether or not a thing is or isn't art. Um, Rags, car repair then... manual, art or not? Car repair manual, is it art? Ooh, yes. Ooh, he went with yes. All right. Okay. Um. It, though it though I would would want some clarification as to like what part of it or because I I'll I'll typically side with yes that something is but maybe if you had a more specific inquiry regarding it they haven't gotten well, any more specific then I would I would assume so um I su- probably but I su- you might be able to make a you might be able to make a car or a, any really like technical purely technical manual in a way where the only expression that happens is maybe very subconscious which um, might straddle well, the line but here's, generally here's a, that, here's a clarifying question that might help would you technical art like illustrations of i don't know like a human skeleton or yeah, a heart was, yeah, or absolutely yeah. Uh, I guess, what would you say, you? because obviously the purpose of that technical art is for, you know, very specific real-world practical purposes rather than to evoke specific feelings out of you, but what would you say would be the, 
why why would you be more hesitant about the manual compared to technical art putting to one side the terminology i'm using um i think that for me i don't think the evocation of feelings or the attempt to do so is what makes something art i think it's simply um expression be it consciously mm -hmm. or sufficiently subconsciously uh in some sort of an action or or, or active creation so i am I'm wondering oh, yeah. if there is a way for you to make a technical manual in such a way that like it is purely objective and there is no element of your personal acts of expression in order to con you know to to get across information or to I make things to like diagrams or explanations and I don't know if that's possible maybe me, but I don't know possible. It seems like your perspective is inherently going to stem through in the way that you choose to communicate information because you believe it's better that that um, alone would be considered like sufficient creative expression. That in and of itself, potentially, I because to to explain a like a math to explain mathematics, right? Could you write a math book that wasn't art? Um, I don't know that did, that's possible. I I don't know because math is um, it's so. It, but it, here's what I'll here's what I'll come in with because obviously programming coding that's a technical process mathematical process but there's absolutely art to like good code yeah of, of yeah a um, it's a code it's something you construct and there's a there, there can be elements of cleanliness or messiness to it and yeah. I I just I'm I side with all these things being art mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there is a way to truly construct these things in a way where there is no well, maybe element we of the person's reduce expression. Reduce it down to I come home and I'm like, Fringy, I've opened the fridge. Uh which 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 shelf is the is the fleam in? Top or bottom? And then he says top. I assume what he just did isn't any form of art. But I'm just I don't know if you can you. But then if we upgrade to Fringy is uh, unable to speak and so he draws the word top on a post-it note and shows me it. <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. if we agree if that was art or not. And then he's unable to write words and he does a drawing of the top shelf instead. It's like, well, that's art. What if I, uh, what if I like tap dance and then point to the, uh, to the top shelf? That's kind of where I'm going with it. It's like, where is the line between expressing <laughs> wow. like a creative nature or just, you know, very tactile, like information that's got no, you know, relevance I'm, to I'm a particular flavor. I'm interested in bringing up, because I know we talked about it briefly, the whole, if you drop a camera and it takes a picture, and then you look at it and you really like the picture, whether or not that's art, and I think we disagreed on that one. I think Rags is on no for that one, right? I'm on no for that one. Yeah, uh, yeah like I, I say, have... it, has to be, it has to be conscious or sufficiently subconscious, and I don't um, think it matches any of those things. Would Could someone make the case that it is sufficiently subconscious by virtue of the fact that you had the camera with you in the first place and were intending to create art? No, because like, uh, that because uh, that's not the uh, that that's uh, that might have been something that helps to add to the logical necessities of how it came about. But I wouldn't call those things. Um, I, I don't uh, think that would make it. But no. surely the extreme what? question to ask him is like, what if there was a photo that was, you know, beloved by the whole world and you thought was incredible, but then we all found out that it was actually the the photographer wasn't even in the room and it was taken. Then the camera fell off his table. All right. Like, um, like, like, would you then I, confidently say, like, I, well, that is not art anymore? Oh, yeah, because I've, I've always, or at least as far as I know, I've, I held the distinction between something being art and being able to draw artistic meaning or qualities or things like that out of it. I think those two things are very, very often intertwined, but not necessarily. Um, here's a question. In terms of intentionality, how do, you, how do we square away, like, mistakes as part of the creative process? Um, I think subconscious would be right answer for that one, sort of, right? Being yeah, typically, involved. yeah. Um, okay, well, here's a hypothetical. Let's say I pull up, I don't know, I pull up a blank canvas, and I intend to paint something, like, I don't know, I intend to paint the Mona Lisa, and then I make a brush stroke, and as soon as I do it, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a mistake. And then I'm like, oh my god, this is perfect. Is that... I mean, art? you still did it, so you would have had the intention to do it, 
and you ended uh, up doing something else through whatever process your literal like fucking organics right, have. Uh, here's, here's one. What if uh, what if I'm about to do it and then I sneeze and I drop my I, like, however that happens, I throw my paintbrush at the the canvas, and then I'm like, oh my god, this is perfect. I right, pass it back over to Rags. Uh, that one. <laughs> I don't know. Because to me, I consider that analogous with dropping the camera. If so, yeah, I'm leaning towards no, but a part of it, it just it can just depend on different elements. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. I don't think so though. Okay, um, but a lot I, of it really does get down the, to super one... nitty gritty, like what thoughts they were having at that particular time and their intentions and how that linked with like what they did and. Because all so we're doing some is, of it finding, is just like we're never we're, we're finding never the borderline, isn't it? Which is going to be very yes. it's going to get blurry when we zoom super far in. Because I was actually going to say the, the guys who are, so. you know the guys who attach a like a like a bo a bucket with a hole in the bottom and then they start swinging it around so it just drops random blobs on. You know, it's like do you consider that art? And it's like, well, I'm guessing so. Cause there's a lot of intention there, even though it's going to create a bullshit picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you seen the one where it's uh, like? Well, yeah. The artist has like a naked girl tied upside down, dips her hair in paint, and then pushes her so that she'll start just doing random shapes. And all the top comments are just like, no way he's doing this for the art. <laughs> it's, 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 First it's, off, <laughs> how incredibly based in Redfield. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's art. <laughs> sure. It's, it's weird, but hey, such is, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Such I is art. I remember on this stream, people were saying Jackson Pollock wasn't an artist, which, like, come on. No, he is. He's Come an on. artist. He just he's just an artist who got away with it. Uh well it's just he, he does <laughs> he art got away with it. very <laughs> interesting, honestly. That's it. I just don't find it very interesting. Yeah, but Fringy, yeah, he was either. uh he was dealing with depression, anxiety, and addiction yeah, or something. No, I, I understand. I mean, hey, look, he did the thing that to he good art. To do. He he worked, he he made the stuff he wanted to make, you know, that's that's whatever. I, no, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad we live in a society I, where he can do that. I, I guess what I'm like. saying is I don't find it that hard to just say like, yeah, he's an by... artist. So I'm just not than what he made. Stand by what we said at the time. Were there not two images? One was called Hell, and the other one was called like the Devil or some shit. We were like, if you yeah. switch them, yes, yeah, sphincter or something like. If that. you switch them, so not meaningful. only would Ethan is online not be able to tell, but fucking nobody would. I'm not even sure Pollock oh, would yeah. ten years later. I I would want to take a bunch of uh, Jackson Pollocks and then a bunch of fake Jackson Pollocks, put them a bunch in a row, and be like, all right, smarty pants, which ones are real, Mister Jackson oh, yeah. Pollock expert. Because you're pretending well, yeah, to be a Jackson but, Pollock expert. Well, but Rags, wouldn't it be just... super interesting to do that with Jackson Pollock himself 20 years after? That would be interesting. I do agree. That would be interesting, but it's impossible unless we get our time machine and just specifically to say... No, yeah, because I guess I'm, I assume we all agree <laughs> that I think it would be difficult for him. He'd be like, eh, fuck. Oh, I think so. Um, Because what he's making is just... It's just ain't... I don't see how he could. It, like, it's it's all of the lines and splatters of paint and shit all over the canvas. Like with, and then it's like, Meanwhile, oh, you see the intentionality of he like the way that he held his arm as he did it. It's like, okay, dude, like whatever you say. Do we really want to pretend that this is even on the same level? And then you you as, sit like, down uh, from the Romantic era. Sit down, Quentin Tarantino, when he's like eighty, and you put on Pulp Fiction. And you're like, is this yours or not? Like. Mm. I feel like he's going to be able to say, yeah, it's mine. Oh, uh, yeah, and I feel like there'd be, you know, like, you think about more of the, the I guess what people would typically think of abstract paintings, right? The kind of, like, the, the cubes and, and circles and all of those sort of shapes, like, across the canvas, some of those ones. But, like, even there, there's more intentionality, um, more, a more, a more like, was... clear intentionality that you can, um... I said on the stream, I am willing to be proven completely wrong, but my assessment from seeing him actually paint uh, Pollock, I was just like, I am uniquely unimpressed, I'm afraid. I just yeah, feel like... I just, yeah, I, I don't know. just do not give a shit. I don't even want to... Like, yeah, he did something that was different. It's like, sure, but I don't know. That's never going to be as impressive to me you know, as somebody who did something that was technically complicated. You know if you saw a completely, let's say, gray canvas, and then uh, that's, that alone to me, I'm just like, mm. And then you show me the creation of it is a guy who only ever did like a, an inch of a line down at a time and filled the entire thing without any of them overlapping by hand. I'd be like, holy fuck, that's impressive. Like That's difficult, and that would take ages. Yeah. Um, so I'd be like, but, yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I'd be like, okay, on a craft level, yeah, what he did was kind of impressive, actually. Um, but like, it created an image that I don't care about at all. But, you know, but there's that. Yeah. But with Pollock, I was just like, okay. 
<laughs> you just you're <laughs> you're you're splashing paint. That's fun, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the poster child of like, okay, dude, <laughs> like, yeah. what did you say, pal? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I think there's gonna be a couple of these kinds of questions on the way now. Uh, is when people see Mother Teresa in their loud soup and art? No. Well, I mean, I get uh, that if they I take mean, a picture of it, though. Someone, if, if they, they take a yeah. picture of it, the picture becomes the art. Yeah. Yeah. In the same yeah. way that if you take a picture of a mountain, the mountain itself is an art, but the picture of the mountain is art. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I would. Yeah, probably. I'd happily define it, it that way. I agree. Like, I wouldn't yeah. define nature as art. Nature is beautiful, but it's not art because well, I don't think it was created well, I think by anybody. The thing to realize eventually is that um, art becomes a useless definition if we start including anything that makes you feel something, which is what a lot of people go with. Which, yeah, like, that's, for as broad as our definition is, at that point, it's like, well, shit, everything's art. Which yeah, but is I funny, because someone would be like... want to include you know, people think... like Ryan Johnson, where people would be like, he's not an artist, he's a destroyer. Oh, course, yeah, and it's he, like, no. He is an artist, I just don't like what he makes. Yeah. I don't find that hard to say. I feel like people disagree on the more, because, like, to me, I remember something I think I mentioned on the stream, but if, if you're, like, a cleaner... I don't know, if you're like a janitor, you're like scruffy, and there's like a specific process that you go about, like, that you figured out a way to inject some amount of creativity and passion into the work that you do, and I happily consider that process to be like art. I think that's totally fine. I think like a workflow can be art. Um, well, someone here said uh, an electrician's pipe bending, is that art? The work that an electri electrician does could absolutely be considered yeah, art. I, mean, I, I assume that. you like guys have seen that. Yeah. Like city, I don't know if I'd call them a fuse box or whatever. I don't know what they are, but like the the things that have a hell of a lot of wires in them. Sometimes they'll look like a fucking mess. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. though, electricians will have them looking fucking gorgeous. They're like, whoa, well, yeah, exactly. Uh, and because like, do people think that building PCs can be art? I think I it just is. About like to say cable really... management. Yeah. Yep, exactly, be, yeah. exactly. Yep, I'd happily say that. I don't. I don't want to restrict artistry to things that people always conventionally think of as artistry. I want to I want to accept and appreciate that there is artistry in there's artistry in like yeah there's artistry in like trades there's artistry in being a waitress What makes good rat though well, we well, that's, usually, that, uh, that's a more complicated question Usually you get a scale by like the potentiality of the craft and then just who's who's at the top who's at the bottom and then mm -hmm. where does everyone else fit it's it's a, distinctly a human made framing well, it, if, and it, it's, it's hard for it not to be relative as well. Yeah, like, you know, if there was just a... I'm trying to think of... You know, like, it, it just take basketball. If we met an alien species that were all... Like, the shortest in this species is 10 foot. It's like, well, then... Yeah, they're all going to be the best basketball players compared to humans. Well, uh, the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, right? And so at that point, it's like, well, that's not fit. We, do have, we, we would then, as we do as humans, we'd create uh, classes. We'd be like, you can't have... What's the point in having humans versus the, the glogs if we're just going to lose every single time? <laughs> yeah, the humans versus the glogs, of course. Hello, Mingler, Frisbee, and Rabbi. Hi. Hello. Thank you all for, hey. well, existing. You've granted me many knowledge schleams, and I have a question. How did you all choose your channel names? There's really no story behind it, unfortunately. If you were looking for something meaningful or deep, I just thought it was a fun little short name for a dog, and I just went with it. Mine is not yeah, meaningful or deep, but it's, I don't know, makes more sense, I guess, in terms of just, it's a nerd thing. I liked Darth Maul when I was super young, and then I called myself Darth Maul. And then that was like, that's a lame name. Darth Mauler. That's still lame. Lose the Darth Mauler. That works. There we go. And it's yeah. stuck ever since. Yeah, like mine's same. I, I th there's no like meaningful, interesting story there. Well, all right, <laughs> we nailed it. Woo -hoo. Uh, the mountains are his handiwork, and the skies proclaim his glory. Oh, all right, we're talking about like what? Like that gives everything. In oh, the... I forgot. I mean, yeah, we our that's our accounting. Yeah, that that is certainly, certainly a claim. Our accounting yeah, I, of I, the I, definition of art would mean that all of nature is art it was made by God. But obviously, we you, you ain't gonna find that well, here. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, and but, if yeah, you wanna, exactly. yeah, you um, have to establish that like that's real. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's quite, just, yeah, quite an interesting claim that you have there, though. Well, well I, mean, I, I guess it's kind of it's kind of interesting, right? Because if you believe that God is like a person. 
who has the capacity for creativity and makes these kinds of choices, then yeah, I guess you would probably have to accept that the universe is art. Maybe a bit of a um, curveball or not would be would a ch like a baby be considered art if two people intentionally create a uh, life. I don't know. It's it's getting a bit weird in that there's an answer to a question like that. Like our like our dog breeds art. Um, that one I think is easier to answer than the human one, but because like there is actual craft going in genetically into. Well, I say this as if that's not happening with humans somewhat as well. There is some of that already. Isn't CRISPR like what it's called? I think that's the one that's called, right? The genetically engineering people. Yeah. Gattaca. That's a that's a really interesting movie that I haven't seen in a very long time that I think Gattaca. I want to rewatch. I don't think that's what it's called, but, you know. <laughs> to each their own. Well, uh, there you go then. Is filling in a medical form at a doctor's office an art? Uh, I don't know if you draw, like, a smiley face on it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> when when it says, like, in your own words, describe your level of pain, if you said, like, you know what I mean? Like, you are trying to express yeah, if, something if you there. you wrote something that seemed like Edgar yeah, Allan Poe, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, uh, yeah, again, if you put, like, a little smiley face on there. I think it's interesting that the New York Metropolitan Museum has an entire dedication to knights' armor and guns and swords. They celebrate the art of the skill. And also, well, I mean, just like those things are often just gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. People would have to accept that there's artistry to, uh, to like um, blades and, and, and guns. Modern cars have to sacrifice aesthetic for mileage. Lots of sharp lines or bold features create a lot of drag. Fuel economy is important to buyers. Okay, that's cool. A car yeah. is art. I, well, I, 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 I don't even know if for it to not be art. <laughs> I don't even know if they're trying to say like that as a contradiction to the concept of cars being art, rather than a challenge artists have to overcome. In the same vein, uh, you know, like directors, uh, it's like I want that well, shot. It's like every medium to get that shot, yeah. we're gonna have to you know do this, do that, do this, do that, and I don't even think the budget can handle it. Do you know about like the famously most expensive shot of all time? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't think it I do. is. Or maybe I've heard about this. What? Uh, hang on. It's, uh, it's funny enough, it's something I remember, I remember being told it, and then I think Patrick Willems did a video on it. Um, I, fuck it, I can't find it for now, but it's a movie where they wanted to get the sun at the right position and an airplane flying at the right point to it. So you can imagine the amount of things they had to get right in order to, uh... Yeah. And it cost a bajillion, well, not, you know, a lot of money. Um, and it's just like, it's a gorgeous shot. But it's like, fucking hell, you know, careful. And it's like, well, we got, we got, we got art to do, buddy. So, <laughs> yep. You know, that sort of thing. And in the same vein, yeah, it's like, you can't let this car have any less fuel efficiency than X. And then you're like, okay, but I really want this, you know, design on it. So how do we solve that problem? All right. I think the reason why is I, I just remember that during the stream, people were saying things like a car isn't art or, um... Okay. Or, like, just a, a number of things weren't art. Like, that was popping up constantly during the stream, which is fine if you feel that way, but, yeah, I definitely... Like, clearly it is. Like, They're going to encounter all know, kinds of problems uh, if you make that claim. You're going to have yeah, contradictions floating up everywhere. Well, well, I think the reason why it's annoying is because people would be like, well, sure, a Ferrari is art, but not like a Honda Civic. <laughs> um, that's kind of the thing that annoys me. And it's like, no, it all is. You have, it has to all be. Because once you start drawing the line of when it's sufficiently interesting enough to you aesthetically, that then that becomes odd. It's like, hmm. That just seems like a flimsy uh, standard. Yeah. Uh, random Film Talk, congrats on making it onto EFAP, my dude. Yeah. Hooray. Really fun to meet him. Yeah, it was. My definition for art is a conscious mind expressing through a creative medium. What is a creative medium would be my first question. I mean, that's a that's a decent, concise definition. I, I think so. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty uh, good definition. I think that the 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 thing is is that when I the creative medium part is the one where I'm wondering like what that means. All you know, sorts of things. I'm sure the person saying this would probably have creative medium pretty broad. Like the better question would, would be what so. does it not include? Yeah. Like farting. If if I was like. 
Well, I mean, if I fart a symphony, if I do some farts and then I record them and then I, you know, I, I wait. <laughs> But if you had like record them and remix them, it's like, yeah, you are making art for sure. Oh well, what if I'm trying? You to know, wouldn't even have to record it. You know? That's what no, I'm, that's what I was saying to... about the the medium <laughs> of farting. Like you, you know, if if I'm right. very maybe I'm trying to express my fucking anger, and I'm like, girl, I'm gonna fart real hard. <laughs> That'll well, show yeah, as we often do. Oh yes. You know, like you know the, <laughs> the the having the glasses and then then running your fingers along the uh the top to make music. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of an interesting one of using you know utensils to uh to create art. Is it yeah. which which EFAT was it that I was like we had to watch that video where uh the guy is like he's benching something and then he just farts because it's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it falls on him. And the dude spotted him is like. <laughs> Trying to hold it together to get the fucking thing back on the stand before he could just laugh like crazy. It was too perfect. It was. Yeah. It, 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 was it hit his chest and it was like it <laughs> shot <the> far <fart> out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a perfect sounding part as well. You know what it means. It's like you're focusing all of your muscle tension up there. It's like that that little amount that keeps your ass closed yeah. just was let go. <laughs> the human body is funny. Uh, are snowflakes art? No. No, because they're natural. I guess they would be if you believed in Jeebus and But if God. you believed in God, if yeah, you maybe. Believe that, maybe you believe that God has the ability to create things without using any expression. Maybe. I don't know. Y'all well, people believe weird shit, who knows? It would be funny if it was he was crafting each individual one. It's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's taken well, a while. He, if he's omnipotent, he's got infinite time and infinite Do you think God uses AI for it? <laughs> like, he's like, <laughs> I don't want to make all the snowflakes. We'll just, uh, you know. He created a little AI algorithm to take care of just the weather patterns. It would be so funny if he was like, it's not AI, yeah, it's magic. And it's like, magic that replicates the snowflakes so that you don't have to in, in different images. And he's like, yeah, so not AI. Right, <laughs> like, not AI. It's, ma it's magic's God. different. It's, yeah, exactly. It's God powers. This is not a super chat. Modern art is rubbish. Not all Damn. of it. Lots of it's really not cool. All of it, no, yeah. Like I said, I, I want to try and leave the door wide open for some really subversive and crazy art that makes me go, whoa, that's super cool, because you got the thing yeah. and the thing and the thing. But not the banana on the wall. No. That's, Less um, that. or the toilet, or it's just a yeah. toilet. Yeah. Uh, sitting on pies can be art, as can be seen on Better Call Saul Season 2 Squat Cobbler. Or American Pie. Well, he wasn't really sitting on it. He was, uh, doing something with it, though. Artistic. Are there pies in American Pie? Yes, there's a, oh there's my a goodness. pie. A, I assume you haven't seen the movie. No. Because it's, uh, I, uh, American Pie is famous yeah. for its pie scene. Oh. It's been a long time since I've watched that movie. Did you watch did you watch any of the sequels? I think so. There were a few sequels. I remember yeah. I dropped off at some point. I know they did like a newer one with like a lot of cast members coming back, right? Yes, I, but I, I, didn't I didn't see, see that. that one. Um can conversations be art? Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I don't know how they couldn't be. Yeah. A lot of expression in conversation. Well, because yeah. here's the interesting thing, right? How do you square away, for instance, like uh, any any book that is like a dialogue, an account of a dialogue, you know, real or fictional? Um, is it once you write it down that it becomes the art? But surely it would have to be the art, you know, when it's being expressed, if there's, especially if there's creative intent behind the words being used and how they're said, enunciated. Yeah, I probably like, wouldn't speaking go that direction art, for the, explaining it, because you could go the route of the mountain and then the photo of the mountain, and the, the photo makes it the art rather than the mountain itself. But with conversation, you don't need to go to a, an art form. You can just be like, well, we're trying to get the other people to understand what we're saying through our own choices of expression, right? Yes. Uh, given that Time Stone was part of the snap, could it have been designed to account for secondary deaths, i.e. it kills a pilot because all the passengers were part of the 50%? Also, high regs. Hello! That's something for the writers to tell us. Yeah. That's not something you can That's leave right. to fucking up in the air. When, it, it and it's so to... easy, too. You just have, like, characters being like, there's so many people that would have died as a result of other people dying, and then you'd be like, the way the stone yep. would... I don't even know how the characters would fucking know this, but Remember, if they said... A... A quarter of the planes would drop out of the sky. If they said, um, don't worry, 
the stone will account for it. I, I just be like, I, I don't know how you write that in a way that's satisfying, you know? I, not only do I think that there's no way to account for it, I think that the way that the film plays it out is kind of acknowledging that that's absolutely not what's happening. That it's like, we are going to accept all of the consequences, including the deaths that happened during that intervening, in those intervening years. Um, it, the, the reality is that there's no, like, easy answer, but I mean, they might have chosen, like, the worst possible way of going about it, of just bringing everybody back without telling anybody and just, like, letting everybody fend for themselves in the aftermath. And the motivation was not a matter of trying to figure out what was actually going to be best for everybody. It was that Tony wanted to protect himself um, to, the, to the exclusion of everybody else, which is not great. Yes. Bringy bringing up the red painted canvas reminded me of part in Daredevil Season 1 when Fisk bought Rabbit in a snowstorm. How does that sort of instance register in the conversation of art to y'all? Oh, what, um, Kingpin's big, uh, painting that he's always looking at? Yeah, Rabbit in a snowstorm oh, well, is that... obviously the implication of what you're looking at would be mainly white. Yes, well, the, the thing with, uh, the thing with, uh, Fisk was that that one was, uh, that was, that was very, 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 very personal stemming from his, uh, history. Something to do with his dad, like, right? Because he was, he was... Yes, that's right. Um, well, the thing that he said about the painting is that it makes him not feel alone. That's, uh, that's what he values about it, which is really interesting. Makes you think. Because Daredevil is a good show, and the reboot's probably not going to be as good. Yeah, uh, just to have a look, like, this is, funny enough, this is from, uh, Screen Rant. Um, in gaining possession of Rabbit in a Snowstorm, Kingpin has taken control of his narrative. The powerless Kingpin feels in his childhood echoes throughout the development in his adulthood, and the trauma sticks to his soul like tar when he recalls Mark murdering his father to save his mother from his abuse. The painting helps explain Kingpin's MCU backstory, reminds him of his decision to become the man he is in that moment, and in buying it, serves as a reminder to bring him back to the fork in the path where he swore not to be cruel for the sake of cruelty like his father. Um... The rabbit in a snowstorm painting also serves as a metaphor for the clean slate in Kingpin's future life. The painting starts out as a reminder for Kingpin of the horrible memory of his first murder. Guilt mingled with the resolve to not become the type of man his father was. However, upon acquiring it from Vanessa, its meaning changes. The blank walls association with the painting is slowly etched out of his mind, and instead of his trauma, the painting serves as a fresh canvas, one of which he can put a new life. Doesn't blood get splattered on it at some yes. point? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty to to draw from. It's not just a white picture, you know what I mean? Like, but even then, no, no, you no. can get as we as we were talking about in the stream. You can get all kinds of anything out of anything. Yeah, you can because it's kind of the nature of like this is what we're talking about when it comes to like the subjective experience that people derive from art. That's going to vary. That has to vary because people have different preferences and different life experiences, and that's going to inform the stories that it's the, it's the reason why you can watch a film and go, yeah, that's a great film, but like, doesn't not very interesting to me. Compared to a film where it's like, yeah, I know it's I know it's super flawed, but like it's really personal. Like the story that it tells well, it, kind of speaks to me in a very personal, unique way. In another way, remember Saw Three when uh, your Jigsaw dropped uh, Billy or whatever's tricycle on the floor to symbolize the bike that was hit really? uh, by the sun. So that's supposed to be like a moment for the main character to see and be like, oh, geez, you know, remembering it, understanding it, and meanwhile, all of us were just imagining like little puppet was just, you know, cycling along, and he slipped and fell, and then he was like, oh, can you help me out, please? <laughs> like, Jason. <laughs> Which is I'm a far... Play a game here. Is a funnier a interpretation, you know? Mm-hmm. And the director was probably like, why are you... Why can't you take, take things seriously? God. I, I can, but not your movie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. Uh... Bad art doesn't awaken any emotions. Not true. Yeah, that's not true. Bad art can piss you off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not to mention, what a useless metric, too, because if I was like, I didn't feel anything in TLJ, and then the next person's like, I fucking felt everything, so now what? Like, well. I guess it would be <laughs> the interesting thing is that, you know, like the, the notion of apathy, right? When art gets nothing out of you. In a certain sense, that could be worse than if it really pissed you off. I agree off. with that, but the, obviously I wouldn't take any further than myself. I'd just be like, yep. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Almost cool. to the point where I'm like, I'm ill-equipped to discuss this one, because I felt nothing. 
Yeah, yeah. True. You didn't even say belch. I didn't. The That's art. art of the day is reflective of the culture's nature and values. Modern art is reflective of just how shallow and controlled our society is. Uh, okay. Um, all right. And it's too too broad for me. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't like that as a, just like the simple narrative for why. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, couldn't snap have taken secondary deaths into account, i.e. dust a pilot. Oh, that's the same one that they said. It could people. have, oh, it but could have, you but would have to... Had to be in the you, movie. Yeah, you, that would have to be in the movie. I can believe that it has the power to do that, but that would have to be in the movie. Yep. Like I, mean, I said, a quarter of the planes it. just dropped out of the sky and everyone on them died. Yep. And the one that they really don't like to talk about is just what happens if you're a guy and your whole family gets snapped and then you, I don't know, you did the misery and then he kills himself and then his family comes back. Holy shit. What a horrific story yep. those families have to go You just lost half through. your surgeons, half your yep. doctors, oh, yeah, yeah, half your course. nurses. Not to mention the collapse of society in general. Yep. yep. Half the world leaders, half of their senates. Yep. Could you imagine line of succession, you know, in terms of... Hey, man, it would have made for a really interesting time, but oh well. Oh, yeah, but we skipped past it. No, not only was it not an interesting time, it, it was so not interesting that it was devoid of any, like, new supervillains. There, there was just nothing. The three year, the five years prior to that was, what, a dozen supervillains rising up and crazy shit happening? And those five years, fuck nothing. Just nothing. Nothing that they figured was worth seeing. Isn't that crazy? Uh, Jeremy John said, Rosario Dawson was more Ahsoka in Daredevil than she is in Ahsoka in the Ahsoka <laughs> show. Um, yes, his recent video is pure gold. Yeah, Jeremy John says a lot of fun stuff, and, uh, he's on point yeah. a lot of time. He's the, um, he's the good Chris Duckman, essentially. Pretty much. Uh, they, they, they sit on two sides of a coin, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. Wolfbane has sent so many super chats for a Long Kong watch fab. Come on, lads, give the guy and other fab fans what we want. It'd be one for the ages. But yeah, when there's less going on. Yeah, that's going right. Us, uh, yes, it'll happen. It'll definitely happen. You'll see it one day, Long Kong, and you'll all celebrate from the hilltops to the lo lowest valleys. Uh, there'll be screamings everywhere because yeah. it'll be world peace at that point. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, but why hurry? Um, you know. Yeah, you don't want to rush something like that. Um, happy 251st anniversary. Cheers to another five years. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. yeah. Would you consider language art? Uh, the actual language, that's an interesting question, because obviously the, the way that language is employed is absolutely art, but the language itself. That's a really interesting one. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's where I'm at on that one. I don't know. It would take a while to I'd have to like break apart. I guess the construction yeah. of it. Got anything, Rags? What was the question? Is language an art form? Um, I mean, I'm a of course. Language is like. The way we express ourselves. No, the, the so like when you create a language, when you well, almost certainly, how could you do that without expressing the way that you you know kind of are, whether it's Tolkien's languages or anything like that. Oh, see, that's easier to me can... actually. Like Tolkien making one feels, I guess. Um... I mean, how could you? I mean, how could you make a you know create a language that that in the words that you choose and select for thing and the rules of grammar that you have as part of that language not come from your experiences and what you feel works best or is most interesting? Um... You know, you win a meal for rags. That's a. Uh, oh, did you not think it was? I was on a. I don't know. Um, I think. I, it, yeah, I think it's absolutely. So what I was. What I was. Also the sterile. Was at random. No, well, well, wait. So maybe the thing to help clarify is obviously like written language is art, but what about like the actual language itself? Like the word "the" is that art? The word "the" in and of itself, like the yeah, concept kind of, of the symbols well, and, and, arranged yeah, that, to. And to give kind of uh, my half of that actual. was going to be that. Um, when I, when you talk about like you know if I'm making a new language and I'm like what's gonna be the word for water and I'm like um I don't know uh, graft and it's like is that art that me deciding to choose those noises uh, when I haven't 
You know what I mean? Like, to me, that's a lot more different than describing what the water feels to me in English, you know? Maybe, but by saying yeah. language, it's not just, like, a word, right? It's oh, the well, whole uh, thing. It's the whole package of all of those things combined and how they are chosen and why they are chosen. Well, well but it's, it kind of comes back to what like... I was talking about with the top shelf yeah. thing, where I'm using a sound to signify very, very definitive just information. I'm not using it necessarily to be like, I want to know how you, I want you to know how I feel. Well, yeah, because, but... like, for instance, if you said, how are you going for me? And I said, blah, 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 blah. is that art? I mean, it's you expressing yourself. Which but, yeah, that probably... Is art. Well, yeah, that is, yeah. I think, like, okay. any response you have to how are you feeling would be... More than likely are, yeah. Uh, okay, what yeah. if what if I was just what if unprompted I just said Bleh! You're still expressing yourself. Okay. So what if I sneezed? Um it's potentially art, but not necessarily. Okay. So sneezing is potentially art, but potentially. definitely is. I think so, yeah. Okay. Because a sneeze is a physical reaction to an internal stimulus, right? I guess. Now, I when feel you like the top the shelf, bottom shelf thing c captured this better because the it's you expressing something, but it's so sterile of like your actual in interest and thoughts and feelings that it, it, I think it breaches the line. Like it no longer becomes expression because you're just yeah, being like, like you're just like top shelf. You know, that's where the thing you want is. Is it art when you say, "Hey, can I get a quarter pounder with cheese"? See, that, I don't that know why art? we're moving away from my example. That one feels I, a little bit more complicated. If you okay. always <laughs> answered your right. top shelf inquiry in that way, is that like your, your, your personality of like just how you express yourself when you are answering questions? That is like that, that, that's your personality. That's the way that you speak and the way that you communicate your ideas and answers and give people information. Well, I suppose we'd agree then at that point that anything you say would be anything under that. It could be odd. Yeah. I've, I'm leaning towards that mm -hmm. unless something changes my mind, but I think I'm going to go with that for now. I think that language in particular and the way that you express yourself, even flatly and in the most utilitarian way possible, is still a way for you to, you know, ex it, it's still how you are expressing yourself. You I are mean, deciding agree, to do that as opposed to other ways. But. Yeah, I, I, uh, is the way and some things are walk, more expressive than it, others, well, I think. Is so. the way that you walk art? Um, I don't probably mostly say, not, you have but it can well, be. Well, if somebody says that you know you do the Chad walk versus the Virgin walk, I was gonna say, I feel like we, we are conscious of expression of your, yeah, how we, that, how yeah, we look I, when I we think, walk, aren't we? If yeah, I think sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. It depends. Well, it depends on the person and what yeah. their you know their thoughts are as they walk. Well, so, if it, it is truly how... a totally automated process, then it might not be art at all. But, well, but then what but, about speech? I mean, how far do we want to push it then in terms of it being automated? Like, what does it mean if somebody walks the virgin walk and they're not standing up straight with their shoulders back? That is an expression of something to do with them, whether or not I we think, think it's, it's more automated or subconscious or not. It expresses something about that person. Yeah, it's that's why I said it can be. Well, I feel like it has to be. It would have it might, to be if we were going that way. Maybe. Um, the I think that language is a, a step above that. Why? Uh, the the selection of specific words, phrases, their inflection. I think it's more of a uh, it's more of a conscious process. Um. The I... idea of you speaking without even thinking that you're speaking. I don't know if that happens in the way that you just walking is a mostly automated process of i want to go over there now the legs essentially i, I move, think you should make the reverse argument be and be like thing. you're in the middle of a game and you say for fuck's sake and then someone says what and you go huh yeah but that's definitely art though yeah okay but like if i'm gonna get up from my chair or walk from one place to another i feel like that's more conscious decisions than me saying for fuck's sake in a game uh the decision of getting up in the way that you do that i think are different um so I don't know. It depends, I guess, where you draw the line, which I'm not exactly so, like, sure where. If I would. somebody had just read like Twelve Rules for Life, and every time that they got up for like the next week, they were doing it very consciously of holding their shoulders back, you would say that that's art. But the guy yes. who just so it's art because he's thinking more about the way that he's walking. I do think that there should. I think that there's a threshold of how sufficiently subconscious it is, or conscious it is. That isn't necessarily met by every action uh, that your body takes. Is a drunken ramble, is that odd? 
Yes. Yeah, it would have to be. Like if somebody... Okay. By the... okay. Um, hmm. Like even if they don't remember it the following day, I'd say like that would be piled in with everything oh, yeah. that is you. Yeah. So that would be adhering to the idea that anything that you say would be odd in terms of an expression of language. Well, like I'm, every single thing. I'm kind of with rags I'm on the whole on yes. intentionality aspect. It's just that, um, because sure. I think you it's went a bit you even further potentially with how like saying for fuck's sake in a game is like, that's built on a lot of things. And there's a reason you're expressing that that way, even if you didn't even realize you'd said it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know. Like yeah, you I can said, express I, I yourself in ways uh, that you don't really pay much attention to, or maybe you do it so uh, much that it's not even, I mean, it's like the, like sometimes when I used to have to drive to work, I guess, you would just, I just suddenly would realize that I had arrived at work and was parking the car, even though I couldn't, it, it's like I went on complete and total autopilot. Mm -hmm. um, well, but I would still say that like the way that I drive is still uh, an element of expression. Isn't there a study that said like shouting, you know, swear words or whatever has like been scientifically shown to reduce pain when you like hit your foot on something or whatever. Yes, that is true. Um, it is. It's well, essentially. It's like a like a mild natural anesthetic. A lot of time to scream instead of to try and be quiet and hold it in. Well, yeah, it's like in uh, the Simpsons. Remember when Homer with the angry dad, when uh, if he him holding it in almost got him killed. It's like that. You remember that episode, right? Where he had, like, the lumps popping up on his neck because he was repressed anger? Yeah, because he was trying to... Uh, wasn't it something like he was getting in trouble for being too overtly angry, or he was just trying it, to change? No, it was, be it was because of the, uh, it was, it was Bart doing the Angry Dad cartoons, and then he realized that he was angry, and so he decided he was going to try and keep it under control, partially so that people wouldn't make fun of him. Good. And then he got so mad that he turned into Hulk. Interesting story about the strangling thing. Someone sent a message saying that um, the creators or producers or whatever have been making fun of that statement as clickbait. So just to rewind a little bit, right? Story comes out, Simpsons remove Homer strangling Bart. People highlight it, say it's indicative of modern times, make fun of it for all the reasons you guys can imagine. Then someone says, actually, it's fucking clickbait and that they've been making fun of it and that, whoops, you know, that's just how the rumor mill goes. And so I was like, oh, wow, okay. I, didn't, I, I thought it was for real, okay. And someone else tells me, no, it is real. The clickbait is, and if you look into it, 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 they're making fun of the fact that this is old news, that they stopped having him strangle Bar a, a while ago. Oh. It's not, like, do you, oh, do you see what I mean? Okay. Like, oh, yeah, that's kind of fascinating, but I mean, it just brings us back to, oh, okay, so you have retired the joke. Exactly. I was like, wow, that's fascinating. It's like it was clickbait that it was clickbait. Yeah. Kind of, because, I mean, at the end of the day, they retired the joke, presumably for the reason that Homer said in that clip, which, again, is hilarious, is like, times have changed, yes, because in the 90s it was socially acceptable to strangle your child. I didn't realize it that was, um, it could ever be seen as any- I thought that was the joke, that's the whole- the joke it's is shocking and funny. It's shocking, but because it's a cartoon, and it's goofy, and it's because it's so excessive that it's, it's funny, it was always- it was always a bad thing that Homer did. It was never a thing that was more or more socially acceptable because it was the 90s. The whole point of The Simpsons is that they are a dysfunctional family. That's the point of the show, is that they're not t totally functional, that they've got problems. It's like, you go for so long that you forget what the show was about in the first place. Which I guess, yeah, that probably does happen when you do it for like 30 years. Yeah, interesting journey, and it just makes me <laughs> constantly distrust everything I read. <laughs> like yeah. on both ends. Um, art is like being special where everyone else is special. I don't know exactly what they mean. Is that a criticism of how low the bar is for what constitutes yeah, art? That meant to be like a but like, that's fine. Thing. <laughs> you know? I'm fine. I with feel like that. people yeah, misuse. Just because something constitutes as art doesn't mean I have to respect it. <laughs> <laughs> people misuse because art I isn't do. i would say art isn't special uh, like a broad category in the same way that fucking carpentry isn't i mean it is <laughs> it's special compared to other crafts but art is also special as a f you know category of human activity i suppose i said it's special to, it's special in that sense yeah it, i mean it doesn't seem that other animals except for maybe elephants do it yeah all in the same vein there's just lots of things that we do 
that wouldn't be considered art necessarily. We've been trying to go over them today. This is going to be a long yeah. uh, catch-up video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there you uh, go. That's how it goes. Uh, chat, what if you hadn't eaten breakfast yesterday? Mm. Oh, my goodness. Asking the hard questions. Interesting. Um, the blocky, hard edge style of architecture Rag speaks of is called brutalism. It was developed under Stalin in the USSR for maximum efficiency and to quash individualistic expression. It's a psyop. Okay, but like brutalist architecture can be interesting. We'd like, love brutalist architecture the... in certain fantasy environments or sci fi environments specifically because it can evoke specific like feelings or. Yeah, exactly. Um, in contrast to other buildings, perhaps. In contrast and... to something like Art Deco, for instance, which is like the opposite of hyper extravagant. Well, yeah, and something like almost cartoonish. If you had like a fucking street where a bunch of people lived and like the guy who was really strict, annoying, lame, and whatever, he had like a visibly brutalistic house or something compared to everyone else. You know, there are times where this, yeah, this no, sort of work no, no. is really appreciated well, and yeah. stuff. I get I get a little bit bored when people have the complete overreaction to like any kind of like modern minimalistic architecture. We should all return to the architecture of like nineteenth century Europe. It's like I like it too, but like I do like my variety. I do. Yeah, like I think that's what we should always strive for. We want variety rather than um, well, one I want style. People to feel like I, I what I'd like to see is that people feel like they can essentially make the thing that they think is interesting rather than everything being one type of way, one way or the other, minimalist or, like, I guess, traditional, classical. Because, like, yeah, I like I like my gothic architecture, but if everything was gothic architecture, I'd probably get bored of it eventually. If everything was Art Deco, I really like Art Deco, but every if every building was like that, it kind of is like, oh, okay. You know? Variety is the spice of life, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the, money, the money I'm giving you is art. I know, yeah. The message certainly is. I I agree. Um, I'm sitting in a forest by a lake right now on fungus. Uh, in and Yum. so seeing art right now. Sitting in, did someone make the fungus? Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. You know how we we would agree? I assume that oh, um wow, a completed wow. dish by Chef Ramsay, for example, would be art in 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 a of form. Course. Even though someone... some people in chat said that wasn't the case for some reason, but anyway, continue. Even they're fucking wrong! I assume we would then categorize if someone picked up that plate and threw it on the ground, smashed, and went everywhere. Has that now changed from his art to theirs? His has been destroyed uh... and they've made new, new art. Maybe? Yeah? I assume that's Maybe. how that works. Well, I yeah, assume like, it's still a bit of well, both, right? You know, in Bean, right when he uh, destroyed the painting and then <laughs> put the face on it, that's that's his. That's Mr. Bean's new. mother now. <laughs> <laughs> his chin must be modern art because I can't stop staring in horror and pondering why oh. I mean that's kind of a good thing right that any anything can make you think so much you, know, you want you want more time in the world spent pondering upon its mysteries that's right what about naturally beautiful people or animals no. Uh, well, <laughs> no. I mean, people would, people would agree that, like, makeup is art. I'd agree with that. that yeah, uh, estheticians, absolutely. Well, and so, and photos know, of fashion, animals. Fashion. Yeah, But yeah, just exactly. having a face because genetics made you that way, that's not art. But the um, way, but what you do with that is... Yeah. The way that yeah. you style your hair, wear makeup, shave your absolutely. facial hair, stuff like that, that's absolutely, yeah, absolutely, that's art. Uh, in the Greek world, the definition of art was the application of practical wisdom. This could mean architecture, sculpture, painting, etc., etc. Yeah, that's, applicable that's, wisdom. That's interesting. Well, that's one of those things, especially though, where you'd be like, there'd be so much thinking behind that, and so much to explain and develop, but that they want it in as short a phrase as possible, right? Well, it's kind of the challenge of trying to summarize it in a short way because there's always like room to have a conversation about yeah. it. Right, like any of the normal inspirational quotes, it's like, well, sure, but we we could talk about this a bit more, you know. Even if even if it's agreeable, there's there's stuff to unpack. You have four twelve packs of soda to bring in. They are the kind with perforations that you push in to create a handle. Your pride, you mean, yeah. your pride prevents you from making two trips. One has one end partly opened. How do you carry them in? 
You can carry them with only one. I actually did this today. I went to the store and I bought some beer, and it was a 12 pack and the or a 12 case, and it, it's in the cardboard box and it has the little perforations uh, that you can use to carry it. Typically, they're on the sides. Um, so that you could either carry it with both hands by sticking your fingers in the perforations and then the handles are, you know, emergent from the holes that you created. Or you could just use one of your hands and just carry it. It's not that heavy. It's just a 12 case of beer. So this is literally something I've done today. You can just carry it with one hand. You don't need to use two hands for it. There you go. You solved this problem. Nice one, Rex. There you go. That's right. Uh, and for those who might be curious, the beer that I got, it was a variety pack of Sam Adams, uh, like Oktoberfest stuff. Um, in fact, actually I have a pic, I took a picture. I went there to get some stuff for myself and my dad. He's really keen on those kinds of beers. So let me open up. I took a picture and said, Hey, should I bring this over for you? Um, let me go to my photos. It had flannel, uh, flannel fest, which is a Munich Dunkel. It has Oktoberfest, which is hearty and smooth. There was Samuel Adams Jacko Pumpkin Ale. I bet that tastes pretty good. Uh, and then there's Hoppy Lager, which is dry hopped golden lager. So it looks like there's going to be three of each of those four. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping they turn out pretty well. It sounds like the kind of stuff that I would like as well. Uh, by the way, that, uh, that Shiner Holiday Cheer stuff is pretty, pretty good. They make an excellent variety pack that literally is. So some variety packs, like um, they all, like the one I just described, it's 12 bottles. There's four uh, different varieties that are of which there are three each. But the Shiner one, which was like a holiday variety pack, it went all the way. There were 12 individual kinds in there, one each. And that now that's a proper variety pack, right? That's a, mm, you could have done like six types of two each but no 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 they went all the way 12 individual flavors good on you shiner good on you i went to the moma yesterday and there was a lot of great stuff there the moma i'm not that familiar, museum of modern but... art oh right <laughs> i thought the moma was like an actual building called the the MoMA. Yeah, well something like that yeah but that makes sense. Okay. Museum uh, of Modern Art. Is Belle Delphine's bath water art? Hmm. In a way, yeah. She bottled it and sold it. What? It's it's mixology. <laughs> mixology, <laughs> yeah, I suppose in a way, yeah. That's a thing that happened. Yep. Uh, uh, a fire extinguisher is amazing art. It's a perfected technology. Easy to spot, easy to use, but you won't accidentally use it, and effective. Um, a lot of, of those things don't have to do yeah. with it being art, but I would agree that it is art. Well, yeah, like a fire hydrant as a as a thing, right? You know, the old classic fire hydrant. Yeah, that's, the red that's ones, yeah. Like, that's definitely kind of like the same as the, uh, you know, the the uh, the telephone, you know, London telephone uh, uh, box. That's, that's like art. Booth? Yeah, booth. Mm -hmm. uh, for a second, I'm like, is it a box or is it a booth? Like, not knowing which oh, yeah, it I guess was fucking me tremendously. I was about to say, because, yeah, you got the phone boxes, but then you have phone booths, and it's like the red one you're saying. is like, yeah, is that a box yeah. or booth? I, I think That's... that would be a booth, but I'm not sure. You've, you've made uh, it's, a, it's a reason why, because I remember someone, uh, people, again, you can tell I'm still annoyed about this. Like, a light a light mm. post isn't odd. It's like, come on, some of these, like, old, you know, there are many, European yeah, many kinds of light posts. Place. Yeah, and obviously they are made to be displayed publicly, so a lot of them will be done with that in mind. We exactly. got to have light posts. We might as well have them might look nice because well it makes nice. our yeah, because it yeah. makes our town or city look better. Cool. Or we'll yeah. we'll put some things on them so that like banners can be draped from them, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, can a moment in time be art? After you appreciate all the random variables that go into something happening and the realization of its impact on the world, would that then create an emotional response equaling art? It would not be art, um, but Unless they can absolutely, you can draw things from them. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you draw things from life even if it's not um, art. Well, what's interesting is how they ended that question with, would it then create an emotional response equaling art, which is a strange question, I, I think. Yeah, I don't think emotional responses uh, are what makes unless something you, art. Unless you channel that into something that is... Yeah, like they can help you make art. Uh, they yeah. can, you know, inspire art. 
but not necessarily. Um, an artist killed a kitten and did terrible things to its body and called it art. It caused much debate on what makes art art in my country years back. I mean, yeah. again, technically art, but fuck them. Yeah, absolutely, fuck them. That's that's that's. This is kind of what we're trying to get at. The the art is almost a term to just describe um, an event, I guess, or an action. It's not, it's not... It's not like to describe it as something doesn't mean it's necessarily positive. It's yeah, because when you say like an artwork. Um, I hate to say it, but like Hannibal Lecter is often considered an artist in like the fiction that he's a part of. But I mean, obviously he's a serial killer. Like it's it's yeah, the, this stuff comes with it. It's, it's it's um I think that once you get enough of these questions answered, you start to like see a broader picture for art, but also you see its edges. If that makes sense, you like mm -hmm. that's as far as it goes. It does actually stop eventually, and then you refocus on the um. Let's actually talk about how you know, good they are within the craft that they are. I suppose the... the oh, more... and, then, and then, of course, if you want to talk about whether or not you consider it to be moral, there can be art... That yeah, that's like, entirely yeah, that's another thing. Moral. It's shit. In fact, making a painting with shit, could someone could be like, that. that's really fucking yeah, gross. That's, that's disgusting, yeah. that's repulsive, and they're absolutely entitled to that perspective. Uh, Jackson Pollock died drunk driving while cheating on his wife. There's no way that man wasn't an artist. But is that meant to be? I don't understand. I guess they're saying like, like artists are often the... tortured and stuff. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a meme tortured artist. Guy who, you know, you yeah, it, it's literally have... a perk in RimWorld is a, backstory, <laughs> is a trait you can have as tortured artist. Oh, really? Yeah. And you would do that to them? Yep. Oh, yeah. Part of the story. If they're good know? picks. Wow. Maybe, yeah. It's like a. Whenever someone has a mental breakdown, they have like a 50% chance of coming out of the breakdown with a, a, a creativity inspiration. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, hey, any alternative way to give you guys money other than Super Chats? Uh, Streamlabs, I guess, is the other one. Um, we tend to do a catch-up for them as in blocks as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other... Uh, we each have Patreons. I know... Uh, that's not... Yeah, that doesn't count as YouTube, of course, so... Uh, I believe myself and Rags have subscribe stars that are active. Yes. Okay. Um, and it, would that be it? I guess every time we have a, um, you know, uh, some kind of merchandise oh, run, which we're trying to make sure we get at least like once per year, so that if people want to support that way, that they have their opportunity. But we'll try and change it up every time in terms of the thing it is. Um, or if it's a similar thing, a different version of that thing. So. Hopefully one of them works. Also, any plans in maybe bringing the guy from Pitch Meeting into EFAP? If he wanted to, If he wants welcome. to, yeah, you bet. Speaking of art, I'm at a storytelling festival today, so I'll have to watch this later. Hope you have fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I did have fun. Hope you have fun, and we sure did. We sure did. Sure do love fun. Pretty smart director. It's true. Is me masturbating on camera for other people art? I mean, yeah. You're certainly expressing yourself. Um, that one's kind of an easy one because there's so many. I mean, isn't that just porn, <laughs> which is an art form? That, is anyone going to find that difficult to 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 swallow? I guess it's just when you say it like that, it's funny. <laughs> just you sitting there recording yourself wanking. Yeah, <laughs> like... I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> Uh, being told what to think or feel about an art piece is gatekeeping. Art itself is conveying emotions, and just as same words can spark different reactions, same art piece can make you feel different things. I wouldn't... Uh, well, wait, so being told what to think, uh, I agree, is... I don't know if I'd call it gatekeeping, but it's wrong. Like, in terms of, you have well, to I'm think this. You must think this, yeah. It's just like, fuck off. That's not how that works. But well, offering I mean, you know, a perspective is totally judged. chill. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And pe and people may judge you based on the perspective that you come away. Like, if you watch a really tragic scene in a movie and you're cackling, you know, people will judge you for that. Yeah, and they're welcome to judge you, but they step over the line a bit when they say that they must control how you think. You're like... Well, yeah, it's like, alright, come on. <laughs> uh, would you consider the mix or form slash function a form of art? For example, many medical gurneys are made so that every part that causes movement is red. Um, so when we're talking about, like, the that would have been designed and likely, you know, I guess, because gurneys are old now, but 
However it was designed would have been done in a very artistic form, I would imagine. Yeah. So it's, it's hard not to include stuff like that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Check out The Secret Art of Dr. Seuss. Really intriguing. All the right. Secret Art of Dr. Seuss. Oh, we like art. We like secret art, too. Uh, why are phone call audio quality still crap? I don't know. I was complaining about this yesterday to uh, Apple Opinions. Because um, I talked to him on the phone, and he was just like, why? Because <laughs> like, it still sounded like <laughs> shit. And I was like, why I don't know. Like crap? Yeah, My phone's not old, internet. either. It's like two years old or whatever. It's just like, why? Why? Does, why? I guess it's got to be the technology that it all runs through, right? I guess so. Fix it. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. As someone who does like some modern art, Ethan has the most vapid takes ever. Like, did he just copy them from a College Art Critiques editorial? You can He's see what happened. He, he told us. He had a dull-ass, like, caveman take on art, and then he was introduced to the idea that art can have stuff behind it, like lore. And it blew his mind. He's shockingly uninsightful. Yeah. Like, in a surprising kind of way. He, it's um, like talking to, like, an NPC. Well, right? Or, or, or like, someone who he... watched nothing but, like, um, really childish stuff and watched their first adult movie and was like, wow, anyone who watches cartoons is a fool. And it's like... Yeah, like, kind what, of the what? art that you go on as a teenager but then grow out of when you become an adult. Yeah. And you can say, like, aren't like you doing the same thing he is? And I'd just be like, well, I mean, there's truth to some of the things that get said in that, like... In terms of like exposure to certain things, like we went over how what his perspective could be applied in terms of correctness, but also just insanity, and then um, to introduce it as though he's like enlightened was fucking hilarious. Well, it's just you get the vibe that he's like, huh, your favorite painting is like the Mona Lisa. Fucking. He said loser. the David. He said like, if David is yeah. your favorite sculpture, then like, oh, okay, you, oh, just don't, yeah, you don't yeah, know a lot about art, then. Good. Yeah, it's just like oh, kind of like in the same Which way is... that you said. I don't know if you said your favorite movie was um. Titanic would be like, huh, my favorite movie is like some fucking French It's way film better than that. Yeah. And that's the thing, though. If you're going to take law as like the thing that makes the thing impressive, it's like, why can't I take its cultural impact or how much the world thinks of it? Well, yeah. Is, is that not part of the law? You know, if, if you wanted to say that your favorite movie was like, I don't know, fucking Spider Man 2. If I walked about, up. Like, Michelangelo's David and then I started to basically read off the major points of its Wikipedia page, which I imagine is quite long. And I yes, said to like probably. that that was what inspires me so much about this statue. And then someone said like, so not really the statue, more so the effect it had on culture. And I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that that's fair. totally fair. And so that's kind of what I mean. Like at that point, his enlightenment is so fucking limited. It's it's almost boring. Well, his enlightenment is like it's 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 yeah, it is boring. Um, it's it's like he discovered. Yeah, it's like he discovered context beyond the scope of the work itself for the first time. And then he thinks it makes him a genius. When, like, everybody already understands that you can get the inside of the creator and feed that into your understanding and appreciation for art. Fucking normal. <laughs> like, that's just normal. Mario Kart 8 is actually an allegory for socialism. Nice. Um... Then why is it good? I don't, I, yeah, it's like, an I don't, allegory. Not really... It's not the actual thing, Rags. Right? I, mean, I don't know about that. It's a hyper competitive, you know, it's a hyper competitive game where you got all of the characters, now including Funky Kong and Diddy Kong finally, and uh and Pauline, you know, right? And my man and... Funky Kong, he don't believe in no socialism, okay? No, That's Funky true. Kong is a chill dude. He doesn't believe in he he believes in having a good time and exactly. and, and, and you Hell yeah, you know, That's my ideal political system. Uh, what do you Funky what do you Kong? think uh yeah. Do you, Having do, you a good time. Mario, do you think Mario is very interested in politics? Yes. He's yeah. he's desperately trying to maintain the monarchy. He's a big fan monarchy. of Mussolini. He, uh, Every he single game, this. he's trying to fix up the monarchy from falling apart. Bowser's trying to destroy the monarchy. He definitely well, thinks about the Roman Bowser's Empire trying to supplant the monarchy because Bowser is a monarch. He's the king of the Koopas. Dang. Yeah, but so really, it's not two mon it's two monarchies going away. Mario doesn't want to fuck Bowser though, so it's, it's, it's just Game nothing of, there. Game well, well, I mean, we don't know. That. <laughs> uh, if you'd played Super Mario Flim Flam Flim, you'd know that Mario did not find Flim Bowser Flim attractive. Flim. So I think Who that was just him playing hard to get. He didn't want to wear. He didn't uh, want. To, he wants to play his cards close to his chest. Who's the Tywin of the Mario world? Waluigi. <laughs> Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. He just doesn't let anyone know. When opens up his mouth, he goes... 
As soon as, I, as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, it's fucking Waluigi, of course. Obviously, yeah, and he tries right. to play the clown sometimes so that you don't know. Who's, uh, who's Ned Stark? Hmm. A lot of characters here we could choose between. We're just doing Mario, right? Not, not yeah. like spreading out to Super Smash Bros. or anything. No, no, no. Because I feel like, you know, like uh, Link, that would probably be Captain America, right? Uh, what if you imagine like Mario? It's got too but, much of a. Uh, I think like Super Smash Brothers as a Avengers. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, the fact that Link is mostly like quiet and he just does the right thing all the time. I mean, do you Captain think America, that, that should yeah. weigh into it. Well, it, it they're not be, one it to would one. Be the idea that, that like Link is kind of like your straightforward noble hero, which feels yeah. like yeah, uh, yeah, like I can Mario. see it. Yeah, I would imagine. Because I guess the funny thing is, when you think about them in terms of importance, it's like, so is Mario Iron Man, uh, in terms of, I guess, you compare it to, like, their Marvel movies, and it's like, I guess he would have to be, um, I don't know, I don't feel, I don't feel like Mario would be Captain America, but at the same time, I don't feel like, uh, Samus is Black Widow, I feel like she, uh, I feel like she would occupy a different role. And, and who, what about Fox? Maybe Fox is Captain America. He's a leader, you know, he's a, he's yeah, a, man. he's a, yeah, man, Miss yeah, come, come, me. come when he <laughs> says, when he says, come on, he's basically saying I could do this all day. Well, what about Captain Falcon? Come on, show me, your show moves. me your moves. <laughs> Falcon, punch! that seems more like a bit more, uh, you know, ballsy and he's uh, a bit more cocky. Flamboyant. He's, yeah, exactly. Maybe he's Tony Stark. Maybe. What happened to him? Did he nearly get blown up and then he's got a little, like, magnet on his chest to keep the shrapnel from getting to his chest? We still haven't figured out, because I was thinking that, uh... Oh, wait, well, actually, uh, I... maybe there's too many problems with this, but, like, you know, like, Iron Man is, like, I guess, Samus? Uh, they, they're so different, though, as characters. They're totally it's, different it's, people. We gotta do more than the suit, right? Yeah. Because yeah, but... obviously there's a suit, but like, but remember, Samus also, she's not like a regular person. She's got Chozo DNA. She's and a woman, that's DNA. true. <laughs> no, it's just that she's genetically enhanced, so she's I know, not, like, like, she's a woman. Hey, Iron Man gets genetically enhanced in certain comic stories. Oh, in, in comic stuff, sure, but, but, uh, but they've got different, ba they've got totally different, well, yeah, no, they're, they're just not even remotely, just because I got a suit of armor doesn't mean that I put them as, uh, Okay, but like fucking Fox and Captain America are completely different too. Um, they're both they're both like the very sort of archetypal heroic leaders. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, okay, you know, but like Aragorn and Theoden are completely different too. That's true. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Well, I guess the thing is, if if you had to choose between Link and Fox as being uh Captain America, who do you think who do you think better suits the role? I think Definitely. I would edge toward Link myself. You would? Um, yeah, I, I feel like Link would express a lot of what Captain America would. He just doesn't speak. He just doesn't say it. He keeps it to himself. He says it with his actions. Pretty much. Uh, he speaks is, with... That's so how is, he is, does is, it. Is Kirby, is Kirby Thor? I think that, that works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, especially uh, not earlier Thor, later Thor, because Kirby's cute and fun, you know? Uh, yeah. Thor, it's, I hate to say this, but it's like, Love and Thunder Thor might Thor? be the closest to Kirby, unfortunately. I think that might be an insult to Kirby, though. No, yeah, it's an think. insult to past Thor, that film's Thor. That film's Thor is pretty consistent. It's an insult to oh, me. Christ. He's a clown man, right? Yeah, yeah but um, the problem well, with being a clown man isn't being a clown man. It's being a clown man when you're not supposed to be a clown is, man. In the Super Smash Brothers, like, lore, Kirby is often the, like, unassuming ultimate hero. Because uh, Sakurai created because Kirby look at him. Life. Well, it's just that uh, in Subspace Emissary and in the uh, in the the campaign for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, he's like the ultimate hero. He's like the one who saves the day. He's the one who essentially sets into motion the events that save the day every time. Um, because Kirby kind of has inflated importance in Super Smash Brothers, but that's okay. Inflated. Ah, uh, wow. Well, yeah, exactly. See, I intended that. Whenever, whenever cool. I do that, and you which point he does, it out, clever, yeah, I like that. Yeah, what Thought about I was uh, quick who, enough to catch it? Who's Hawkeye? Oh, um, 
I'm distracted by something, but I'll He's wait. sort of like a, a secondary character oh, hero oh, who likes Donkey his family Kong. a lot. Donkey um, Kong is Hulk. I'd say Donkey Kong, you can comfortably have yeah. him be Hulk. Even though Donkey Kong's pretty chill, honestly. Okay, He's now who's chill. matching based on, like, superficial things? Donkey Kong and fucking Hulk don't, like, shit. And you, you got no, the Bruce Banner true. side of things. Where's that going? That's Donkey true. Kong is that's a scientist. <laughs> well, don't, that, yeah, no, they're really... And he loves Donkey bananas. Kong, Donkey Kong is incredibly chill. Um, he's actually yeah. He's not like chill, rage monster. I think all we're getting, all we're discovering is that Donkey the, Kong has a rage monster Nintendo, inside. The of Nintendo him. characters are not very analogous at all with the Avengers, as they are. As and yet, team. you are forced to connect them, so you just gotta, you know, sometimes you just gotta pick. Like, yeah, I guess so. Uh, well, I mean, uh, obviously, I Luigi would be Winter Soldier. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just, it's just everything matches, so. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> Haunted by his past, you know? He's just desperately guess, uh, trying to get out there and do the right thing. Meta Knight? Who, who would Meta Knight be? Would Meta Knight be the Winter... S well, no, they don't... Because Meta Knight makes his own fucking choices. Um, hmm. Who is Meta Knight? I wonder who would be Meta Knight. Man, they, they made a... Falcon. How did they manage... How did they manage to make uh, Meta Knight so unbalanced in... Uh, in in Brawl. What the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> I love that game, but holy shit. May I tell you what I was distracted by now? Okay, yeah. I mean, I feel like we've, we've, we've drawn as much blood from this stone. Um, what do you, you just, More stones to draw. Blood. So there's, um, there's a documentary on Robocop, and uh, I knew about this, but I just got reminded of it because I just saw something to do with it. But basically, they're about to start a scene, and there's this guy who's um, helping him out, some kind of stagehand or whatever. And he's walking up to um, Peter Weller, and he's holding his gun, and he's ready to give it to him, and he's also got loads of Oreos in his hand. And, uh... Uh, th th there was this thing, and it got said on other documentaries, okay, that apparently Peter Weller wanted to get so into character, he wanted to be referred to as Robocop by... Oh! ...people okay. on set, including, like, Robo. And, um, he took it seriously. And th this is... I'm not gonna say this is true, this is what I've heard from different accounts. And so this guy is walking up to him, and, uh... Uh, Peter turns to him and says, Robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> and apparently the guy was like, Peter, I'm not I'm not playing that game. Like, you have to say Peter wants an, an Oreo, not not Robo. <laughs> he just said, Peter wants an Oreo. Uh, uh, Robo wants an Oreo. He kept saying Robo. And then uh, they would like they just like wouldn't start the scene apparently. And then the the <laughs> the director of, or whoever had authority at the time said like, "Can you please give Robo an Oreo?" <laughs> and then <laughs> and the That's guy hilarious. the guy apparently stuffed all the Oreos into his face to prevent <laughs> <laughs> Peter Weller from having any of them. <laughs> That's how the story goes. And in the documentary, it then cuts to Peter Weller, who then says, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just lie and make that up? I don't later? know. Or am That's I just not really remembering funny. this? That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Robo wants an Oreo. <laughs> Oh, because people interpret art, they say it's political. Most of the stuff I make, I don't have a statement. Not hard to think the same for other artists. Well, the problem is, is an artwork political when it's got a fair interpretation or when the artist intended for it to be political? Or both, or neither? Hmm. I assume we would settle on, it doesn't matter what the artist said or intended. Well, in terms of whether or not you could say or derive some political meaning from it. If uh, the story went, and there, there was explicit, like, the problem with capitalism is, and then labels a lot of, like, criticism known to it, and then in the story they change to a different system based on that, and then other problems come in based on that, and then the villains are personified versions of those systems, and they clash, and blah, blah, blah. And then you find out it was all made by a randomized, like, person throwing darts at a board, didn't even know what these words meant, and wasn't trying to make something political, he was just choosing random shit, and he wanted to you know, you'd be like, I don't. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, I just don't care political. that you didn't intend it at all. Exactly, political meaning can be drawn from it. I mean, I guess that's the whole monkeys of the typewriter, right? Yeah, which is another yeah. interesting one to think about in terms yeah. of uh, sort of artwork that would it, knowing something like that about your favorite. If if prestige was made by monkeys on the typewriter, I'd just be like, okay. Man, okay. <laughs> like, well, by happenstance, they managed to create an incredible film. Yeah, good job, monkeys. <laughs> Yeah, like, it was what? the best of times, it was the blessed of times. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> what a, it's such a simple joke, but it's hilarious. Blist. <laughs> <laughs> Finger painting <laughs> is the new tool of the alt right. Finger painting. Oh, oh, they're up to something. Oh, that was the thing in the uh, in the video right of where they got finger paintings and then were comparing it to Jackson Pollock or trying to convince people that it was modern art or something. Monstrous. Mm. Uh, I can't believe how often I heard this same speech about art being political. It always came after people who I watched come back from college. Yeah, because it's another enlightenment <laughs> thing. But it's so boring. It's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I it's know. All art is political. It's like, yep, yeah, you're cool. You're so smart and fucking interesting. Anyway, do you mind? And then they're like, ah, so yep. you don't understand. You see, when a piece of art is made by a person in a culture yep, and a civilization, I mean, like, yeah, and you're like, I yeah, I know, it, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. No yeah, yeah everything is the sun. All right, now let's move along. Yeah, we're all stardust, so it's fucking super. It's like when um someone takes drugs and then says, you know, nothing means anything. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like the boogie revelation. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I just discovered nihilism for the first time in my life as a man in my late forties. Uh... <laughs> One must ask himself the vital question: What are the politics of Bob the Builder? Capitalist. Uh, well, I guess maybe it's pro -union. He's an entrepreneur and pro -union. yeah, maybe yeah. You know? yeah. It could I be. I can't or remember just, if there's any reference in to that. general, like yeah. um. He's getting paid for this yeah, work, okay? He ain't doing it for free. He's a good builder. Yeah, he, he's doing he's paid doing. for the work, but he's it's probably like ethical capitalism, honestly. Absolutely. Bob would never take pay, advantage of his workers. Extension uh, machines, do they get paid? I don't know. Maybe they care not for money. Maybe they're okay. maybe they're just they don't like they're so taken he, care of and they don't have any desires. Or... Is that what he's Dude, doing? imagine. I don't know. The it, AI I have to like learn more. bots didn't want money. They wanted like the warmth of friendship. That's what they were they were working for. <laughs> and, like at, yeah. the, at the end of the day, they'd be like, "Friend, shall we go to the bar?" And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, okay." They mean alcohol. <laughs> All of this, they're they're raging alcoholics. Once the cameras go off, oh boy. At the bar, he's like, how do you feel about the newest film? I like film. <laughs> I thought it was overly long. Film good. Paced poorly. I guess having eyes is right-wing propaganda now. True. Yep, I'm happy to have eyes. Did you guys hear about his live stream of Super Mega and all that drama? He had to take it down to save face. No clue. Don't know exactly what oh, his yeah. involvement is with that. No. No clue. Have any of you seen Maggie Mae Fish's Zack Snyder videos? It may take it may make a funny EFAP since none of you are Snyder fans and Maggie's literally insane. She thinks the zombie outbreak in Dawn of the Dead was caused by Muslims. <laughs> um, what? What? That's interesting. I don't even remember I've what the cause was of... in that film. Was it like um Experiment no on animals gone wrong. For I don't know, and I don't care. I don't, I don't care know. about. The, I don't care about that movie. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't hate his Dawn of the Dead. It's not as good as the original. Oh it's not wait, like... sorry. I'm mixing up with Army of the Dead. I no, haven't seen that movie. Not Army of the Dead. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Dawn of the Dead. Oh, okay. That might be one. I don't think I've seen it either. That might be one to um, do a back to back with the original and his remake. Because his remake yeah, wasn't poorly received. People kind of liked it. I think. But that was uh, that was early in his uh, filmography. Was it his first well, movie? Well, the key for me is the. Do you know who wrote it? Was it was written by James Gunn. Yeah, interesting, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm surprised somebody, somebody, uh, someone's finally covering this woad of snob. He's a bit obnoxious, ain't he? Have a f uh, fun stream, nice stream, and high rags. Hello. Yeah, he was yeah, a bit of a snob. Obnoxious. When someone tells you you're wrong about one of the most broadest like selections of art ever, you're in for a pretentious time. Like it's you know because you'd be like, well, wouldn't you say that he was wrong about modern art? I'd be like, not entirely. He's like, it's incomplete. He's got a journey to go on. <laughs> but I'm glad he's out of phase one, which is looks at it and goes thumb up or down. Like that was, you know, you've made it past that one. Yeah. Good day to you, chaps. Been watching for a couple of years, but I missed 250. Also, top three favorite characters from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Oh, this will be for me and Rex. I remember then. enough of it to. Um, I well, I, it's been so long. I, I don't actually have. I haven't retained all that much of it. I know that um, the Armstrongs are both up there for me, brother and sister. I thought they were both pretty awesome. I'm going to just. Um, I'll, uh, what was the name of. Is it Mace Hughes? I'm, I'm going to avoid saying. 
yeah, more I think about Hughes him. Is his name, yeah, yeah, I know. Super, like super likable uh, character, and then uh, King Bradley was pretty badass, and I am obviously very happy with which sin he was representative of. Um, those are the ones that come to mind quickly. Outside of why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Roy Mustang. That's it. He was cool as fuck as well. Um. Yeah, that'd probably be the selection. Though I've, I'm obviously there's a lot of characters in that show that are pretty awesome, so don't take that to mean anything other than they're the ones that come to mind. But uh, that'd be one to rewatch at some point. Yeah, I wouldn't mind rewatching that at all. Yeah, I, I might do that. I think Fringy would yeah, be particularly that, uh, moved by one of its more famous episodes. Okay, I would be keen on yeah rewatching it because it's like I've said, so much of it has just left my mind because it was so long ago, you know. Uh, is Ratatouille modern rat? Yes, it is modern rat. It's mm. Very good rat, yeah. Ooh, yum. In all fairness, George Lucas was a tryhard. <laughs> not to make of that. Sure. I guess, uh, you know. <laughs> all right. Yeah, It's a sure. good thing okay. in, in a lot of ways. Oh my I'm god, not... am I dreaming? Random and EFAP? Best day ever. Hell yeah. Hello, Fringy and Rags. Hey! Hello to you. Is it more important for the next Sonic movie to have Shadow being edgy and using a gun, or to have Rouge have massive bat titties and generous cleavage? I think it's so way that... more important for Shadow to have a gun and be edgy. Oh, yeah. Easily. Absolutely. Yeah, like, Rouge is whatever, but, like, Shadow, that's where it's at. Yeah, you guys think that when we make fun of him that it would mean we wouldn't want to see ten movies of Shadow the Hedgehog shooting his gun. That's the... Uh... It's important that he uses light profanity as well, like, holy crap. Yeah. Oh, light profanity. Light profanity. Not polite profanity. Light profanity. Like, holy yeah, crap. Light oh, profanity. God damn. Yeah. I thought you said polite profanity. No, which no, no. And there's nothing of... polite about... No, no, no. He uses light profanity. That's right. Like, what the hell? Or Whoa. Holy... Oh, yeah. No. I need yeah. to hear that nothing... from him. Dang. Yeah, I know. What the no, heck? Well, he, no, he damn. Says damn. He says damn. He oh, he does damn. say damn. Yeah, Ooh, yeah he wow. definitely says Ooh. damn. Oh, oh, oh. I know. Dang. Leviticus Rot is an amazing artist and a fan of the long crew, but since he likes some right-leaning Twitter stuff, maybe people hate his art. Annoying when effort is disregarded because of politics. Um, that can be annoying, but at the same time, I think we can all agree that there could be pol like, for example, Movie Bob, his politics are fucking atrocious. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but what if he made like a really good YouTube video? It's like, I might be able to accept and acknowledge that, to be fair. Maybe that was a bad example, because if he did well, make maybe. a good point, I'd want to acknowledge that, but whether or not... I guess it's let's put it this way. Take. If he put out a series of movies, and he was going to do a Kickstarter on it, I wouldn't fucking support it. And he'd be like, why? Because of his no. politics? And it's like, yes. <laughs> like, like, even evil, evil, yeah. terrible, yeah, horrible course, person. Like, if, if it was presented as, well, I mean, you could watch two movies. One of them is his, and one of them is another movie. It's like, well, I probably would rather watch the other movie. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, even if, well, it's like, would you rather, if we accepted this scenario, it's like, you can watch the new Movie Bob movie or Ryan Johnson's movie, I'd be like, well, Ryan Johnson, he seems like a nice person. <laughs> yeah. He's going to probably piss yeah, me off much. more, but like, you know, in an art form way, not in a, I wish you weren't like a person that had power ever sort of way, which he doesn't, uh, Movie Bob, so that's nice. Yeah, but people have posted on the subreddit recently, and, well, I say recently, it's it's every week, um more like just tweets of him telling everyone to kill themselves who are critical of Disney. What the, what is what what is its problem? I can't tell you the answer to that question because What's um wrong with him? I was it was uh it was talked about I think by Adam and Sitch that um it could have been someone else as well. I think it's many people that it's just crazy how much he can get away with saying. It's 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 like it's almost like he's playing with it at this point. Like how can you possibly get away with saying like you should just fucking die for a uh, you know, when when someone all, all that someone has said to you is is like, um, you know, Disney's numbers are down. Just like what what's going on? And then like so frequently. And uh, by the way, I think there's space for stuff like that and everything, especially in certain contexts. But it's just surprising because Twitter will will boot you for way less than that. It's Even so Elon Twitter. On it. So I mean, I don't know how he's gone away with it for so long. Yeah, like remember, they have denied me coming back to Twitter. Like they're just like nah, you're just you just can't come back, rags. But other people like Movie Bob gets to stay on Twitter, <laughs> who's like openly saying that he would kill like half of the world 
and stuff like that. But I don't get to. Come why back you uh, Why are you lowballing him, Rex? Right? <laughs> he said something like seventy five percent. Oh yeah, sure. it's probably yeah, it's more than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it would get it's us to Mars around. with our mech suits. So there's that. You know, try not to be selfish for five seconds, maybe. Yeah, I'll work on it. I know and I don't steal flaws. his Halloween, okay? Oh, wouldn't dream of it. Uh, do, 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 do. This charlatan is lying about the PragerU video. The host provides examples of impressionists he thinks are good, like uh, Van Gogh and Renoir. He's guilty of the exact things he's accusing PragerU of. That's something well, that we discovered watching yeah, we the discovered video, it. was that this guy basically is a caricature of the thing that he's criticizing. He is literally a reactionary. Was it like um, a halfway point that we said, like, anything else he claims about anyone else's videos, do not fucking trust it? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I, I totally believe that, yeah, he, he will absolutely misrepresent basically everything. He's just... Which, I mean, he that's that's awful. quite an accomplishment when PragerU, isn't it? Like, it's a think tank. Yeah, right? it's, so, like, it's it, a conservative, it's basically a conservative think tank. It's to essentially yeah. propagate conservative ideals. <laughs> like, in, like as, as, as in that, it, that is its goal, like, almost openly. Basically, yeah. And meanwhile, he was being, like, more propagandistic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to the point where he was like, see, look at this guy's, this conservative guy's art, it's shit. And I'm like, we're just sitting there looking so at how cool and amazing like, it was. It's like, yeah. oh, you... It's just it's conservative, so you have to hate it because you're tribe. Pretty much. Ties a rock to a string. Now there's art. Maybe. Sure is. Sure is. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Buy a rags, hire random film talk. Never. No, never. God. Hi, Ragatuni. Hello to you. David's statue is important for the Paragon debate and carved out of a rock deemed impossible to use, stood in Florence as defender of the city center. That's law. No one cares. Yeah. No. Oh, sorry. Wait. No, he does care. And so that would oh, mean it's amazing now. Oh, my wow. God. The statue is now 10 out of 10. Nice. Let me guess. He didn't bother to give a shit. <laughs> it's so funny. It's uh, And I wonder as well if we gave him... The lore of the statue as it stands, and then he says, oh, "That's not very impressive." You're like, okay, so bad art, right? And he's like, mm, you're "Just neutral. You don't really care." You're like, okay, and then we just present him made up lore, and then he's like, "Whoa, this is actually amazing." Okay, the the art is amazing now. He'd be like, "That's not actually the true though." And it's like, you know what I mean? Like this, it creates so many fucking problems. I don't like that point of view at all. Even though I'm totally accepting of listening to the artist's interpretation of the work, it just you hope. That you can detect at least more than one percent of that law from the actual work, because uh, everyone can look at the thing from you know uh, an image to film to whatever, and then have it explained, quote unquote, and then look at it for the second time, and be like, oh, I see, oh, I missed that, I didn't see that, oh yeah, fuck, I wasn't listening to this scene, so I, you know, I missed that, and it's just like, yeah, that's totally fine. Happens to everyone. Yeah, it happens, and it's okay, it's fine. You're not like a perfect robot. On that topic, famed EFAP manager Jay retweeted a tweet for the other day saying the toilet in the room was art because it pissed people off for a long time. I wouldn't agree that's why it would be art. Yeah, I would disagree be, with would him if art. that's what he said. Because at that point, be art. if nobody reacted to it, then it's not art. Like Does that make it not art? Yeah, which is not, we don't want to be using that definition. That's what I mean. Like, when you come up with these strange, like, ways of categorize it's like think of the negatives of them as well and I don't, I don't mean the downside i mean the opposite sorry like the inverse of your statement think about it because uh it'll often it'll stress the scale it'll let you know whether or not it's got a few holes in it i guess uh would you guys consider humans art also hi cat hi no they can what about bodybuilding thing. that bodybuilding is art well and what yeah. about genetic manipulation that could be art Yes, that's art. All right. Artistic quality is determined primarily by greater cohesion, the parts coming together for a whole, and all else being equal, greater complexity. I'd say this is a mode in which quality is often assessed, but the problem, of course, is that you can have artworks that could be scoring low in those environments, but the people who feel incredibly moved by them. Um, say like a 
film that's got like a particularly bad script but an incredible performance. Uh, we would probably try and split those up and celebrate what crafts we think are working at the time, but a lot of people would come away just saying like, no, the movie's amazing. Um, because of those, like an individual element working to surpass... That's the, that would be the concept of more than the sum of its parts, I imagine. Um, or more than the detriment of its parts. I don't know, but yeah. I, I see what you're saying is kind of what I'm getting at. The profound stupidity of this so-called YouTube artist argument is so bewildering. It must be ascribed to higher education. He has to have gone to college to so boldly say so something, something so stupid. I, I think he's funny. just, he's completely and totally captured by just tribal politics. I just wish it he... It informs everything that he says. I wish he had friends that could uh, challenge him on some of the stuff that he'd come up with because there's so many holes. Um, like, he hasn't given this any actual thought. He wants you to think otherwise, but he really hasn't given any of this any thought whatsoever. You no guys one's asked him any questions about this stuff. You guys need to see Meat Canyon's new video on XQC, one of the funniest damn videos I've ever seen. Fat Mini, Boy, perhaps? We. Check out the thumbnail. Yeah, oh, we, we loved right. it. It's We've great. We've already seen it, and yes, it's, it's great. Again, no, it's, uh, I'll take your eyes, I'll do it again, chat. <laughs> Someone's trying to steal my treasure, Chad. Not that I need the treasure. <laughs> Just the fact that he's like, yeah, not that I need it. You know? <laughs> Man, his recent antics with, um, I assume you guys know, right? Like the whole, there's, a, there's an image of him reacting to Israel-Palestine stuff with like a shock face. Like, and that's the thumbnail for the video. Uh, uh, and then yeah, yeah. someone being like this fucking scum. Like, I, uh, he's like the worst one of them all. And then he responded to that with him holding loads of cash. Man, he is like, he really loves to, like, flex money, doesn't he? Like, the fucking watch, remember? The, it gets oh, to a yeah, point look at this watch. where it's so like, expensive. do you want to play the villain? Is that the idea? Like, is, is are you memeing? Because you know how this works, I don't know, works, I wonder right? if it's just simpler than that, which is like, oh, money, that validates me as a person. Oh, I wonder if it is that simple. Well, <laughs> like... But I mean, yeah, good luck with that, dude. Um... Question for your funny art discussion. Is it art to decide all the parameters to force an AI to generate an image according to your vision? Uh, the, wait, like, say that one more time just so I kind of have a good if understanding. If you decide of it. all of the parameters that force an AI to generate an image according to your vision. Um. Uh, I. I still don't necessarily think so. I still think it's the it's still the AI that's doing it all. It's a yes for me. I, just... I'm picturing the Sully here, for example, in uh, Monsters Inc. Oh, that yeah, I get yeah. Okay, I could see that. So yeah, I could see that sort of thing being a yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. There are there are things that could apply to what they've just said that I might consider a no. But I mean, for the broadness of the question, I'd I'd, uh, I'd lean on yes than no. Just got here. What's up with the fat lesbian? Well, you know, just like to have some fat lesbians in life and just a bit of variety. Those are best, you know. Um, I don't think I agree with everything he said, but I just looked up Robert Florzak. He's a visual artist and his work seems really good. It is very good. Yeah, yeah. This dude is the definition of gender fluid. Well, I am Maybe, still yeah, not wow. familiar enough with what that means myself. I know you mainly focus on writing, but as an aspiring editor, I wondered what your opinion is on Walter Murch's Rule of Six, your editing tips. Hmm. I you have Rule don't... of Six editing tips? Yeah, I don't quite know what that is. Walter... Oh, it fills in, nice. Hmm. Murch's six rules of editing consist of emotion, story, rhythm, eye trace, two-dimensional plane of screen, and three-dimensional space of action. Interesting. Makes sense that somebody would have tried to, uh, you know, put this all into it. Figure it out and write down, yeah, simple rules. Yeah. Yeah, just to read one of them, right? Cut for emotion. Let's begin with the first rule, emotion, accounting for over 50% of what makes a great cut. What does Murch mean by emotion? Good rule of thumb for understanding this to ask yourself, how will this cut affect the audience emotionally at this point? Not necessarily that you have to make them feel sad at one cut or happy at another. This rule has more to do with what the film feels like, the tone of it. Are your cuts working in the right emotional tone or feel for what you're going for overall? 
Yeah, this sound. I mean, sure. Um, it, it goes oh, into way more like depth. Good than advice. That. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, good that's pretty solid. Advice, I've yeah. not heard of this before, but I wouldn't mind looking into it. I suppose. Um, and then they're asking, like, do we have editing tips? It's uh, it's complicated. When you make a YouTube video that's reviewing something, I, I'd argue the rules, quote unquote, or the recommendations for editing are very complicated. Com um, when I, I don't mean to imply even for a second that they're more complicated than editing for a movie. What I mean is that um, a movie's sort of advice can be so different compared to a YouTube video, and then that's per video and that's per creator because everyone has a different style. Everyone probably has different yeah. rules. You know, and like recommendations. Like one of the ones we have, of course, is just like you know, use your visuals to your advantage. Make them match what you're saying. Make them um, almost uh, accentuate what you're saying. And you could even have Usually, subtext through I mean, visuals and well. If that was like a more straightforward rule of thumb for me, it's it's the I I I pretty much exclusively sync cuts on um on the end of a sentence or on like a logical break point in a sentence, like or, or, or on like a syllable. I don't like to cut like mid words, but if I do, yeah. it'll be like on a strong syllable. Otherwise, it will be based on the beginning or end of a sentence or a comma. That's pretty much how I always cut visuals. So that'd be one thing I do. It just feels right. Um, but that's kind of the thing. It's kind of hard to describe feel in terms of something that you're achieving with uh with um with that uh, medium, like yeah. Cutting visuals, yeah. Another thing as well is probably, I don't know, that the the those nostalgia critic like pauses <laughs> that he has when he delivers a joke. I'd say like, man, trim the fat as much as you can in terms of, like, making sure that there's not too many gaps between the Surprise things you didn't say. go with uh, Filoni as the example there. Oh, well, sure, but that, I, I guess we're, if we're talking about video editing compared to, if you're cutting together a film, there's plenty of reasons why you might want to have a long pause, but, you know, when you're just showing redundant information at that point, it might be worth considering whether or not you need this shot. Um, in your paint, right to get rid of brush strokes. Okay. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, if the paint was really thin. Yeah, like you wouldn't have brush strokes if you painted, like, milk. Wait, I thought the left didn't see color. Oh, very oh, clever. Oh, 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 no, that's offensive. They do. The art in modern art is in the BS spun to sell it. Well, uh, eh. <laughs> There's good modern art. Like I don't There is. There is actually we good modern it. art that's interesting. I know, and thoughtful, also, depending yeah. on how you define it, because good old Wikipedia defines modern art beginning in the 1860s, which I imagine that when people think of modern art, they probably aren't thinking of, like, Vincent van Gogh or, like, a lot of the Impressionists of the late 19th century. Nah. Um, and I, I think technically anything that's, like, post... Yeah, like, post the 60s or 70s, that's post-modern art, isn't it? Like, if you want to get into the more stricter definitions of these terms, kind of in the same way that people think that all, like, older sounding music is classical when there are actually differences. Classical is a very specific era. And then you've got, like, the romantic era and, so, and you know, and such. There's good modern art, all right? Jeez. Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I thought... Oh, no, wait, we read that one. I understand how you can be impressed by the technical ability required to make a big, perfectly white painting. But that feels like you're not taking, talking about art, but skill, like the videos of people who do their jobs really fast. There's um, a... Well, I mean, it's complicated when it comes to when talking about that. Like, there's an immense amount that you could talk about of the technical skill, like, for example, in cinematography, even if it's a film that doesn't really do anything for you personally. And when you think about what we appreciate about skill, it's usually going to be the knowledge in our head now that that person has lived a life where they've honed this, that they're focusing to a point of using all of their like muscle to perfectly represent like the thing they're trying to achieve. There's a lot of them that is happening to make and has happened to make what they're doing. Like yeah. we are separating out skill there when it's like, well, I mean, what is the appreciation of skill if not the appreciation of that person and the life they've lived and what they can do? Mm -hmm. uh, like form of them watching them express themselves. We're impressed with how they can do it. Um, ever wanted to kill a skeleton by picking one up and hitting another one with it? Well, in Baldur's Gate 3, you can and more. Some very good rat wow. in there. Wow. Hi, rags and scritches for the good good frog. Hello, oh. and thank you. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, wow. They had me in the first half, not gonna lie. 
The Francisco <laughs> Goya black paintings were never named or explained by the artist. There has been so many, so much fascination, fascinating, sorry, speculation into what they mean. Sure there is. Oh, yeah, that, that's like a worthwhile one in terms of, you know, the point of what happens if somebody creates a piece of art, they didn't write down what they intended, and they died as soon as they finished it. Is that art, to this guy, less valuable inherently because of that? What does he do with an artist that puts it right in front of him, but that he says, oh, what does this mean? They go, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. <laughs> he, like, pokes him, like, come on. <laughs> come on, tell me what I'm meant to think. Come on. Oh no, mayonnaise golem, you can't glass stones in a throw house. <laughs> what, mayonnaise golem? <laughs> golem, not golem. What was that noise? That was golem. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it didn't come out that way, but that's fine. Oh, alright, well. Petition to add happy fringy look at em emote for when something wholesome is on screen. Ooh, that's a good idea. You should do that one. That is a good we idea. have Fringy Nars, yeah. so yeah, we could probably sort that out. Uh, let him cook, guys. We did. We let him cook way too long. <laughs> like, and it's, it went bad. Who let this bad cook? Yeah, there you go. Cooking was a mistake. <laughs> Fun Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fact. The CG Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show is the only time Splinter named them specifically after his fave artists. Every other version is a coincidence. Coincidence that they're named after all the famous artists? Well, I guess if you write it in that it's a coincidence, it's a coincidence. I guess technically, yeah. Um, interesting, though. I don't know why they just wouldn't be like, yeah, that's what it's about. Oh no, his straw man is fighting back. That's always the funniest <laughs> when they lose to the straw man. <laughs> yeah, his like, straw man is fighting back. Oh no, his man. straw man is fighting back. <laughs> That's, I'm just imagining it now, a straw man with a sword. Yeah! Pulls on him and stabs him, and he's like, oh, ah! <laughs> you should look up Robert yeah. Florjack's oh art. He's got other pieces that this guy didn't pick that are really cool. The ones he did pick are really cool. Yeah, we were pretty happy with some of the ones he did pick. I think we did look into him, though, didn't we? Yeah, I went around browsing some of his mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. Uh, the lefty YouTubers are still mad that Charlie defended iDub's old content, so they're looking at ways to go after him. Yeah, I remember that. They're like, iDub's was cruel, mean, fucking... and rude before, and it's like, eh. Yeah, they're a bunch of little bitches, man. <laughs> like, well, it's just, it's just a lot of them hope you don't remember that time slash weren't there. Everyone loved what iDub's was doing because it was calling out people who were much worse. You know, like, uh, a lot of the premises were like, I'm going to use your tactics on you and see how you fucking take it. And he wasn't that bad. Like, yeah, he, swear words, oh no, saying mean things. It's like, but he was also, he had really great breakdowns of how they were doing things unethically. But oh well, that era is dead. Using yeah. art in reference to the grouping of painting, drawing, and sculptures as distinct from other media, while it is confusing, it's normal part of how language is used. I don't see the problem. Oh, I don't care then, um, if you think that. Because I don't even agree, um, and you probably don't either. I don't, I don't I don't think care. this person would agree with it at all. It's yeah. just, like, it's not even close. Like you would say that by that definition, then films is an art. What was music would be excluded from that too, right? Well, Performance art as well, like yeah, dance. Like, well, we would just ask like, what broad term do you have for the like art, games, and what, everything you were just mentioning? Like, what what is or, the term or, for them? Or do you agree with Roger Ebert then? Also, they they ended that with I don't see the problem. It's like why not? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it presents a really obvious and lame problem, which is that yeah. it's it a very lame a problem. Of, it's not even well, a yeah, cool just, problem. It excludes a huge amount of creative expression by that definition. So, and besides, if some people use it. That's chill, but like, I don't really give a shit. I'm gonna use a different one. A lot of the processes we're talking about, you know, like um, you know, like, oh, you know, it's a paintings will count, sculptures will count. It's like I'm guessing they didn't count until they did count. Yeah, exactly. Because that's kind of... Let's just skip the, the part where the Ebert video games don't count. That, uh, well, yeah, because Roger Ebert's like, yeah, films count, but video games don't. Skip back a hundred years. Oh, yeah, films. This isn't real. This isn't like a drama. Photography stage. doesn't count. That's real. Yep. So why don't we just cut to the chase, you know? Well, so that was actually what I was going to say. It's like, a sculpture counts, but not a photo of a sculpture. And it's just like, if you okay. count the photo of the sculpture, sure, but not a film of the sculpture. It's like, okay, film of the yeah. sculpture counts, but not the video game where you could push the sculpture over. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> uh, I hate to break it to you, but many artists are alcoholics, a 
AJD drug addict see all of music. Oh, I think he's saying that to the video. Maybe I don't. I don't know. But yeah, obviously, as as what, I'm like the... of artists being flawed people. Yeah, we know that. That's a common understanding. A lot of people, you know, fuel their artwork through their their lives, their experiences, and stuff. Um, I say that just to make sure the door is open that there are some people who create art in a very monotonous and uninspired way. They're just like, meh, put that there, put that there, there we go, done. Which is like, you know, it's it's not not art, it's just oftentimes, um, you, as an audience member, you can kind of feel it. It's basically a modern MCU. It's just, just soulless, you know? Soul. No soul. Also, Bob Ross did paint a face, and it's good. God. Wow, I'm not surprised at all that he's <laughs> talented at painting faces. Wikipedia states that Terence P. Minogue composed the film's score and that Robert Florzak, credited as Robert Hawke, provided vocals for original songs. This would be about oh. Raw, I think. On Florzak's oh, okay. website, it states Robert Florzak composed and performed the songs showcased in the film and with Minogue composed the film's score. Cool. Okay. I said the drunk driving thing is a joke. I didn't think he'd actually insult Kincaid for being an alcoholic while praising Pollock for the same. Yeah, that was that was really weird. It's weird. This is it literally is like having all of your thoughts compartmentalized on their own islands that in no way intersect. It's just just whatever thought you yeah. have that's against whatever the person in front of you is saying. I guess um like the way it sort of works in his mind, if he was to try and justify it would be like you can see Pollock's pain in his work, but you can't see any of it in Kincaid's or something like that. Maybe you can. Well, that's the thing. I think that it's that's that would be a know, bold as fuck claim, you know. I don't. Know, I think it's way more interesting when you have Kincaid painting scenes that he paints like these, very serene, homely, calm, cozy, intimate, appealing, and then knowing the you know story behind it. Like that kind of contrast is more interesting than to me. Uh, than... I don't know about. I don't know if I'd say that. I guess it's like it could be interesting, but at the same time, it could, time, yeah. Because if it's using the Pollock example, it's like no, he was like a drunk, whatever. And then I look at the paintings, and I'm like, yep. Uh, well, well, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I guess, I guess we're talking about Jackson Pollock, but I mean, obviously, Vincent Van Gogh is kind of like the poster. Yeah, if like yeah, obviously, if we're, if we're talking about different artist. people, yeah, it would be different. But talking about and these he, two, yeah. yeah. It was black lines until he spilled some mustard on it. You don't know it was mustard. It could have just been yellow paint. Yeah, that's right. I get the overwhelming impression that Mr. Microphone Stand here would rather talk about his culture war enemies than art from a neutral or nuanced perspective. Many such cases. Yeah, he's not alone in doing that. The people do that from all walks of life. It's just that video kind of uh, did a really good job of presenting a bad case. Or the title. Um, he's criticizing Kincaid for being wildly appealing. Is the ideal art something no one likes? That's another metric I don't like. Uh, you know, like, well, if, like, if, if, oh, like, I like it. You've never heard of it? Wow. Well, just that, <laughs> gotcha. yeah, the art itself becomes bad once enough people like it. It's like, what? Yeah, that's lame. I don't think anyone has any problem with Lord of the Rings being loved by fucking everybody. <laughs> it's mm. like, nope, that's fine. I have heard the word autistically so many times during this stream of becoming artistic. Oh, good. There you go. I think that's a plus, right? To become artistic? Yeah. I feel like that's, you know, you don't have to, but... Yeah. Solar Sands wants to join the call to add context to his video. We had him on for a full episode. We learned a bit about Kincaid as well. Yeah. Backstory. If only he knew there were six trillion boxes in that warehouse. Oh, I remember the warehouse part. That was funny, because <laughs> Charlie nailed it, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh, so funny. Um, Six million cubic inches of air is contained within these boxes. Within that, a synagogue. It is what I believe. I know that I think this is art. And that's what make it was, is, to be, is, do. Random mm. film talk. I thought it was only a matter of time before he joined you Dumbos for another fap. Cool beans. Hey, you should also play DDLC sometime. Maybe we will. Epic find. That is hilarious. Too pretentious to do basic research much? Well done. Yeah, that was a funny part of the stream. Get Solar Sands on. Or don't. I'm not a cop. Well, we did. Sisyphus is some off somewhere frantically searching for his burden. 
<laughs> Why well, he's sure. just looking for a he's looking for a rock to push. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Van Gogh, see the film Loving Vincent. Fair enough. Wait, is that the one I saw I saw the one that had Willem Dafoe in it. That was a that was an interesting movie. He played Vincent Van Gogh. Was that uh, do you remember the name or is uh, I, that's like, what I mean? I wonder if that's what it was called. I can't remember what it was called. I just know it was Willem Dafoe and he played Vincent Van Gogh. Are you fair enough? To be fair, only Jackson Pollock could have exactly made the accidental pattern which he created at the exact time and place that he did it in. Oh, I, yeah, guess well, so. I guess so. Right. Gonna miss seven faps this year because of the AF um, Air Forces, I guess. Uh, also, since we were robbed of an ST. ST4 FAP? Stranger Things mm. 4, maybe? Season 4? Uh, oh, we should yeah, compensate yeah. with an overall Stranger Things FAP this great year. Mm, I don't... I know... I mean, would you actually want me to be watching, like, Season 2 and 3? To prepare for something like that? Oh, I mean, I don't know the... They suggest... Like, we don't do that, ever, with anything. We don't do, like, a full series wrap-up sort of thing. Well, yeah, full... Because that would take fucking ages. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, season five, it would depend. We could watch season five and be like, oh, this is really good for talking about in terms of events or something, but it could also be meh, you know? Yeah. Uh, I always assume these art galleries are just laundering money. I thought NFTs are the same thing that any of these stupid expensive items being sold. Somebody in and among those kinds of industries is doing stuff like that, for sure. Uh, it's just, mm -hmm. there's so many uh, things to take advantage of. The fact that it happens with normal art means that, of course, it's happening with fucking crazy... Those of exposed, exposed shit happens with all that as well, like, on YouTube. I feel Did bland. Did butters ever tell you about NFTs? <laughs> and then they come in with the fire extinguisher and yeah. blast him. <laughs> <laughs> Some old art needs extra info. Memento Mori comes to mind. Uh, either way, modern art without context is just stacked boxes. Old art has a random skull. Oh, and they got um, random in quotations. I guess because they're saying that there's more to gain from older art that that's not explained. That can, yeah, more that you can glean from it without having additional information. I think so, yeah. Uh, even if you were influenced to dislike modern art, if the art was good, you would likely change your mind. You can have meaning and still do good work. I guess you could say you could lack meaning and still do good work as well. Yeah, that's possible. Um, Prager U founder loves Family Guy, big Seth Green fan. Okay. <laughs> what, Dennis Prager really likes Family Guy, does he? That's funny if true. <laughs> that is kind of funny if that's true. Springbo, what's your favorite Australian movie? Just watched Young Einstein again. Pretty great, ridiculous fun. Puppies in a pie get saved. Also, no. What is my favorite Australian movie? Um... I really, really like Gallipoli. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I really like Gallipoli. Um, I need to rewatch it. I'm getting annoyed because I feel like there's an obvious one as well that I'm like forgetting at the moment, like that's eluding me, and then I'll be annoyed when I remember it later. But yeah, Gallipoli's a Gallipoli is um, that's a really good movie. All right. Uh, has he brought up the fact that art is expensive so that rich people can store value into a tradable object like how NFTs work? Uh, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he talks about that, yeah. That, I think he talked about it, yeah. That. Yeah, because pretty much any video seemingly about art, like, art in museums has to bring that up. Well, the, uh, Philosophy Tube one did, right? Yes. Yeah. About how it's like, a as money storage for the wealthy, that that's not much of it is to do with the art itself. Uh, that's some good rat, my dude. I agree, yeah, sure. I love Starry Night. What if knowing it's his view from the asylum made me like it less? Then what, bold man? Um, well, I guess... Damn! Say, like, I guess it's an interesting one, because <laughs> I don't know what his answer to that would be. Well, we, if you we talked about it. He stole it or something, you know? Because if you told well, me, it would just be like, oh, okay, uh, interesting. Like, you know, maybe yeah, huh. not that, I guess. Yeah, I gotta think about what I'd think about it. Yeah, I mean, we, we just talked about how, like, there's things that you could find out about the context of the creation of the thing that can definitely put you off it or put you further onto it. I, I mean, in, inherently within the idea of being further attracted to, like, a piece of art or it means more to you based on what you've told, then surely that opens the door to being told something about it that pushes you away from it. It's gotta be. Yeah, of course. 
Um, what up, my massives? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Question. What beer... No, sorry. What beer is best? Wait, no, sorry. Better. What was each of you guys' most favoritest vacation and why? Oh, Man, favorite the... vacation. That's tough. Um, I think I would probably go with the Washington, D.C. vacation that our family took. There was a lot of stuff there that I really enjoyed seeing. All the monuments and the museums that we visited. I... I really, I, I'm really glad I went there. I think that's probably what I would choose to be my favorite. I think mine's. I went to Venice um, as part of an art trip, but it was more so in uh, the equivalent of college years, I guess, for America, being that there was no teachers and just uh, you know take in what you can or what you want or do whatever you want. And we did a lot of whatever we wanted, but also enjoyed the art stuff and just uh, did a lot of hanging out with friends and stuff. Very much a good and memorable time. Um, my favorite holiday was going to the UK. That was uh, that was really wow. great. I saw a lot of Sucking different things. Sucking up to Mahler. We are pretty cool. No, it's really cool. I saw wow. a lot of uh, I saw a lot of different things. It's very different going on like a, a a trip to the UK. You know, much older country than Australia, for instance. Um, it's just yeah, there, there was a lot of stuff that was really cool that I saw there. All of the history was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. Ton of variety on that trip. Yeah, it was great. This guy would appreciate the backdrop to my airbrush station that catches overspray and start to end splatter more than the pieces I actually paint. Yeah, and then you could tell him that it represents depression or something. Oh, that's always a safe bet. Always say that it represents depression. <laughs> Easy win every time. Animals can make better art than Pollock. Yeah, maybe Pollock. That's <laughs> true. Probably. Well, elephants can paint. But can they paint better than the Jackson of Pollock? Well, they can paint stuff, you know? Oh, that's your answer? <laughs> they can paint yeah, stuff, they can paint so... Stuff. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, they I paint think, faces, though, that's the big one. I think, uh, I think some great apes, uh, you know, excluding humans, of course, I think, uh, I think, like, chimpanzees and orangutans are, uh, capable of, of forms of artistic expression. Hmm. I remember there was a video of, uh, it was a, they gave an orangutan a, uh, a saw, and uh, she had a stick, and she was sawing it and doing interesting things like blowing the sawdust off of it, like as if she was kind of cleaning it up. Um, and then huh. when they put a robot orangutan next to her that started sawing, that motivated her to do it even more. It was just interesting behavior because it was entirely non-essential, um, but it was almost like she was taking pride in what she was doing, even though obviously it was, you know, just, cutting a, just using a saw to cut a, uh, cut a stick. This attitude is why modern movies are terrible. Maybe some. Like this attitude specifically, I mean, but... You Honestly, know, a lot yeah, of it... I, I agree with the Super Chatter. I think this is an attitude that goes into um, kind of what we see with a lot of the bad stuff that we cover, where they talk about, oh, but the themes of this, oh, but what it means is da-da-da, when the thing itself is shit. Well, I feel like um, we phased onward to the point of them realizing that and then using it as a crutch, being like... Listen, we can kind of get yep, away with yeah, this. We I just agree. claim what the movie's about. Yeah, that too. It's that thing that's part of it. Uh, if I shave my naughty bits in order to make them look more visually appealing, do they then become an art? Sort of. All right. They, I mean, I feel like yes would have to. Yeah. Be, you know. <laughs> I mean, I like mine looking nice. You know, down below. I just, I don't want an unkempt garden, as few of us do. Well, it's just you know. Do you think hair dresses hair? Like a barber is an artist, I think you'd have to 100%. say, yeah, there's artistry to, uh, to hair, yeah. Uh, I feel bland, unfinished, like paint scraped over too much canvas. Ah, I like it. I like it. An old spin, or a new spin on an old classic. Well, apparently that is a quote from uh, Leonildo de Vagans. so... Oh, I didn't know that was an actual quote! That makes yeah. it doubly cool. Now that I know the lore behind it... I really can't... What was that? <laughs> it, was... <laughs> it was like half a burp and half a laugh. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. It's great. 300 million for Interchange by Willem de Kooning is an abstract... It's abstract and it sucks. It's number two in the world for price. Huge example there. Yeah, I think it's a scam. Oh, well, we, we went through the list of the most expensive paintings. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, but did you read their lore? 
Um, no, I didn't actually. Mm. So you know, maybe yeah. You learn the, learn the lore before you run your mouth. You might uh, <laughs> eat some humble pie. Also, AIDS. Oh my goodness, not AIDS. Isn't it a great world we live in where someone pays us money for me to say AIDS? A lot of people pay money to try and get rid of their AIDS. Yeah. The idea of most modern art IMO is to show, not tell. They said tale, but I assume they mean tell. And those little item descriptions are taking the show out of it. Um, well, there's no way, if we use the fan example from the end of the, the video, there is no way you would ever be able to no. know that. It's just like the context surrounding why the fan was brought into the room. That's it. It has nothing to do with the fan well, itself. Having... The fan could have been a book, or an end table, or a lamp. He needs to have some kind of crisis, because he needs to understand that, like, if that museum and all the information regarding that pay piece were gone, except the piece itself, in that timeline, I guess he just never gets to appreciate that art, you know? And it's like, oh, yeah, that, 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 that's, it, it, don't you, what do you, what do you, what does that, like, you gotta think about that, right? Like, the, the, just reading that thing is the be-all and end-all. It really has nothing to do with the artwork. Does that not make you think at all, sir, about the nature mm -hmm. of art? I do not know. Art needs skill behind it to be understood, just like a movie needs to be written well to back up the message it's trying to convey. Skill behind it to be understood. Okay, so the problem with that, I guess, is we need to be very specific, because you have a lot of writers that will just have a character say the point of the film at the end. And it's like, okay, so even if you didn't, you know, get it from all of what just happened... There it is, you know, and in the same vein, a uh, kind of a shitty piece of art could do that. Like, um, I don't know, like, like if you drew an image of war and all the horrible things that happen, but they're all like stick men and awkwardly shaped and everything's kind of shit. And then you just write on a sign, war is bad. And you're like, hopefully they get it. Like, I, you know, we, we, what I'm trying to say is we would get the point, but we wouldn't consider it skillful or good or anything. But if I'm being generous to this comment, I assume what they mean is, um, the skill would come in like this form of like the subtext. Like you've almost broken the rule if you're just going to overtly state what the thing is. Um, which I mean it, it is another like format for deciding quality is is how well you conveyed a message and how subtly at the same time. A lot of things come into it, which is good, I suppose. You should watch. Uh, oh, fuck, what was this called? A Sword Art Online is Sao, isn't it? Uh, Sword Art Online. Yes. Oh, okay. Abridged. No need to have seen Sword Art Online because it's bad. It's one of the best abridged series with ever improving writing, VA, and editing. I feel like someone has mentioned the abridged Sword Art, Sword Art Online to us before. Maybe, perhaps. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Massives. I was wondering what you use to make your profile images. I've started making videos and I want a unique image. Naturally, thanks. I use the um, artistic talented of other people exchanged for exchanged with money is what yeah, I did like, to use my I, icon. I use Clip Studio Paint and then I make it. <laughs> I had an idea and then an artist made it. Yeah, like I'm not sure what you mean by like what app can you use to like have a profile picture? It's like, well, I mean, I don't know. There's many different choices, but you got to make something. Like that's the main thing. And the final message of this EFAP. Extinct animal of the day, Host's eagle. The giant eagle in need of a wizard. The giant eagle in need of a wizard? I got, that is one of the images. That's, That's not a good image for scale, of course, but it's got more information. The Host's eagle's wings were short for a bird. Its size has allowed it to maneuver in the forest areas when it hunted. Whether Without any rivals, the eagle could eat its prey on the ground so it didn't need large wings like birds of prey that carry their kill to the safety of the treetops. The Host's eagle's sharp talons were the length of a tiger's claws and the, could stab more than an inch deep into its victim's flesh. They could even puncture bones. The Haas Eagle was the largest and most powerful eagle that ever lived, and because it's New Zealand home, uh, it didn't host any land predators, it is the only eagle ever to have been the top predator in its habitat, a role usually held by big cats or other anim uh, mammals. So strong and vicious that it almost seemed mythical, the Haas Eagle preyed upon animals 15 times its own size and had no natural enemies until humans entered its world. Yeah, get fucked! We beat you!
Yeah, <laughs> boo. Eagles suck. Down with Great this apes guy. forever. Yeah, team ape. Yeah, we go threw apes, rocks go. at you and you fucking died. So, just saying. Neat. Alrighty, well, thank you everybody for sending in, uh, sending your messages. Sorry we didn't get to them faster, but uh, we get through them all forever and ever eventually. And, um, yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope you're having yourselves a good day, a good night, or a good afternoon. All, all of them at the same time. Probably possible, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Alrighty, cool, sweet. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah, see, see you later. Bye. And thanks again. Bye-bye.